Okay, let's see. Audio seems okay there. Let me see here. We're good. We got her down in chat. He says, hey, Jay-Z, hello. Mr. Renov is here, hello, welcome. And Steven is here, hello, Steven. Once more, we're going to try to save our poor noble Nichols from death, you know? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, we got 10 viewers, four likes, that is awesome. Hey, Layla is here. How are you, Layla? She says, good morning, afternoon, evening. Remember that Layla is some sort of time traveler. So, you know, like she exists in different time zones simultaneously. Ian Murphy is here. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. Switch this here. And now we can begin. Hello, Gaffer. How are you? There we go. Hey guys, do you see here? Playing Call of Cthulhu RPG starter set. We're gonna play the Alone Against the Flames solo adventure, you know? Hey Peggy, how are you? Welcome to the stream. We played this, I believe it was last Saturday, and it did not end good, you know? It was bad, it was a bad thing. And I even, you know, I even busted out the good paper, you know, for the character sheet, you know? And we ended up cooked, you know, like jackasses. I'm going to put this over here. So we're going to try again, you know, because we got a good character. We got the good stuff. Uh, poor choices were made, you know. So we're going to try this again, you know. We're going to try this again. Let me see. I'm going to take the opportunity to show you. I've been making some um, improvements to this setup because, well... We could do the same thing that I did last time, you know, which is the setup I use for my crafting streams with a camera looking down. But I have a new idea and I want to, you know, like show it to you. Yeah, and Murphy says, oh good, been playing a lot of Resident Evil 4. That is good. Resident Evil 4 is a good game, you know. Once more into the breach, old friends. Yes, exactly. Like Odown said. Remember, in the Call of Cthulhu starter set, you get three things. You get the book one which is the solo adventure alone against the flames, you know? You get the introductory rules, which is a summary of the rules that you need to play this adventure. You know, the, the, the full RPG, Cthulhu RPG has a lot more rules, but this comes for the starter set, completely functional for you to play. And you can play like in the solo adventure, which is the first book, or with friends in this one, book three, it has very, um, it has uh, three, three adventures, Paper Chase, Edge of Darkness, and Dead Man's Stomp, you know? So you can play these three adventures. All of these comes in the Cthulhu starter set, along with some handouts, you know, some investigator sheets, and even a set of dice. So that's what you can get if you want to get a taste for the uh, Call of Cthulhu RPG. Hey Glenn, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Hey Becky, welcome to the stream. And if you want to go like more serious, you know, and Odown says, I'm surprised it isn't in PDF format. Don't be surprised, Odown. And hold that thought for like three minutes. Over here, you got the Call of Cthulhu Investigator Handbook, which contains the good information, you know? All you need to do in order to run the adventures. This is the equivalent of the player's book in Dungeons and Dragons. And over here, we got the Call of Cthulhu Keeper Rulebook. You see? This one is the equivalent of the uh, Dungeon Masters, you know, book. It has a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the, the good documentation for the thing, you know? Hey, Paul is here. How are you, Paul? How's the shoulder? Is it good? So, we're going to start this and just, uh, you know, like Odown said, let me check this because I haven't been able to check this right now. So we're going to see. We're going to switch to this view. We're going to switch to this view. Holding my thoughts, I'll try not to drop them. This is my new setup for streaming RPGs, you know. I'm right here in the, in the corner. 
Mighty Cthulhu is just up there, you see? Or also, like, here, you see? Watching you. Just watching you. Feeling better, thanks. Okay, good, good, Paul. That's good. But now we have some stuff. For instance, let's see if this works. We got chat, you know? There's now a chat window, you know? I will, like... Let's see, we could, we could improve it for the next time, but it's, it's, it's good, it's good. For now, we get the, 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 the chat there. Also, we get our character sheet right here in a PDF. I already transcribed the character sheet we used to do, you know, which I used the good paper for you people, the good paper, you know. Now I busted the PDF, you know, you can see it right there. You know? And it's filled with all the information that we rolled for Noble Nichols during the last session. And finally, we got the Alone Against the Flames module on a PDF, you know? So we can, like, move and you can read with me. And also this PDF, you click on the numbers and it jumps to the numbers. So no scrolling around. So even though I really like uh, printed stuff, you know, I prefer printed stuff, for these streams, it's better if we try this, you know, with the PDF, you know? You see? Alone against the flames. And Leila says, wonderful setup. Thank you. Also, we got more stuff. We got a dice cam, you know? Because we live and we die by the dice, you see? We got these dice, we roll them, we see the outcome, you know? Also... Since I'm not going to use this, you know, like the, the, the dice that come with the with the set, you know, because these dice, last time, they did us wrong, you know, they did us wrong. So we're not going to be using these dice. We're going to, I'm going to put them over here. Paul says, I found out that they do not have cancer. Oh, that is awesome. But I got some really bad news after that. Just need positive thoughts in the next couple months. Okay, well... Uh, I hope I hope everything uh, works out good, uh, you know, Paul. You do not have the cancer. That is awesome, you know. No, no digital dice. What we are going to play is this metal, high quality metal dice. You know, these arrive. No, you you gotta play with the physical dice. You know. This arrived a couple of days ago. I've been trying to, like, uh, you know, set them uh, with positive energy. So that's good, you know? Loaded dice. Yes, exactly. Uh, and also, th this is for when we have to roll them dice, you know? Also, we get a map of Emberhead. Which now, I, like I said, uh, uh, I, I realize in the module there's a map of Emberhead, you know? So when we need to figure out where to go, and most people want to go like happy, like a squirrel dancing around, we have the map of Emberhead. Odown says, are they magnetic? No, they are not magnetic, you know? They are some sort of copper alloy or something like that, you know? And we use them. But they are good, good dice, you see? So yeah, oh, I mean, I, 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 I show you this. We got the good dice, you see? We got, we're going to use mostly this, the D100. Those two, you see? Yeah, everybody in chat saying healing thoughts to, to Paul. I agree. You know, the good thing is you don't have the cancer, bro. That is good. And for the others, I, I, I hope everything, you know, turns out okay. So yeah, that is the setup for this evening. And also, I have a new, I have a good, some good news for you. If you want to try this, you go to the Chaosium, uh, or Chaosium, I don't know how to pronounce it, side. Chaosium, you know, the guys that hold the, 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 the copyright of this thing. Living Life says, it's amazing how JC's channel has become a small community. That is awesome. Yes, yes. Uh... This PDF is free to download. So you can, at home, for free, download the PDF of Alone Against the Flames, you know? And you can download the PDF of the character sheet 
and you can play as noble nickels if you want hopefully don't don't die you know hopefully can today's event says they are loaded so it makes it seem like cthulhu is on his side well cthulhu is literally by my side literally One big happy family. Exactly, Peggy. Stay there, bro. Don't, don't fall down. So, yeah. This is what we're going to do. So, let's start. Last time, you know, we as Noble Nichols, a private investigator on his way to a new life in the city of Arkham, we were stranded because our, our bus broke down in a town called Emberhead, you know? Weird stuff was happening, there was some sort of cult, and we ended up being sacrificed on top of this huge structure, this huge metal structure called the beacon. But then, you know, St Stephen Circus says, already started with the pawns. Yes, you know, hashtag pawn. You know, we like them pawns here. Oh, also. I don't smoke, you know. Smoking is bad for you. But I do have a couple of pipes. Because when you have this, you can point at things. You see? You can point at that. You can point at this. And also you can... So we have the pipe, you know? Also, it fits the 1927 era, you know? Okay, so... Like I said, our investigator, Noble Nichols, sadly died you know we don't know exactly why we were told our sacrifice ensured another year of existence for this town and prosperity something weird might have happened if we were not sacrificed but like i said we we got cooked you know we got cooked but then the elder gods decided that was not fair and that is how Noble Nichols wakes up, you know, he doesn't remember anything of what happened, and he prepares to a new life in his new job in Arkham, you know, and that's we will, we will begin. So like I said, this PDF of the adventure, you can download it for free in the site of Chaosium, you know, and you can play alone against the flames. A pipe is a good start to the cosplay, but a cape would really bring the nerdy things to fruition. Well, I don't have a, a cape. I do have a coat, you know? Like, I walk around feeling like, I don't know, Gabriel Knight, or, or, or... I even had, but I don't think it fits me anymore because it was when I was in college. I had, like, a, a trench coat, like John Constantine, you know? JC, by the way. Waiting for you to say elementary. Yeah. Elementary, dear Ramming Fit. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Alone against the flames. Like I said, uh, Noble Nichols just woke up. He remembers vaguely some sort of dream. There was like a weird town. And he, remember, he remembers flames. You know? So this is where we begin. The sun is high in the sky, a merciless ball of heat. You feel scorched by the time you reach the bus halt in front of Osborne's drugstore. It is a relief to put down your heavy case and take off your hat for a moment. You fan your face. It's been a long summer here in your hometown. And you're a curious, empty one, you know? And Odell says, but when will you grow the mustache and beard? We will not grow the mustache and beard because remember people with beards, they hide things, you know? They know secrets. You look across the street. I'm going to I'm going to use the pipe, you know, as a read. You know? JC does not like hiding things, you no know, because they're secrets, you know. I have I have not I have not said anything to you Siri, so don't go beep beep, you know. You look across the street at the grubby butch, uh, butcher's shop, the grocer's with its faded awning, and the shabby tobacconist. Mistrustful glare, uh, faces glare at you as they pass, eyeing, uh, eyeing your clothes and luggage. It was your parents' choice to live here, not yours. You were happy down south as a child, 
among Providence white wall houses and leafy churchyards. Perhaps this new job in Arkham will supply the change you need. Yet everybody you know in the world lives here. You know nobody in Arkham, not one soul. You ask yourself one last time if you're doing the right thing. The answer is here. None of your supposed friends have come to see you off. You are alone. Whatever challenges lie in Arkham, it will be a new life and a brave one. A small gray motor coach approaches and rattles to a stop. You put your head back on and pick up your cases. And look at this. We go here, we click and go to 263. And boom, we are in 263. You see, PDF automatically linked. So I'm going to keep writing, you know, in case we lose our, our place. 263. So, two young men with sullen expressions alight from the coach. One looks you up and down before heading away. The driver also steps down, glancing at you before crossing the road to visit the tobacconist. He, he gets the pipe, you know? Hey, Jason is here. We just began. Here in Vegas, watching the stream, spending a week here to visit my oldest son and fix his car. That is awesome, Jason. That is awesome. You know, fix that car. You know. So, um, uh, the driver went to visit the tobacconist, and when he returns, he is rolling a cigarette between his yellowed fingers. He gives it a final twist and examines you as he reaches for his matchbook. He's a thin man in his 50s, dressed in a stained shirt with the bus company emblem. Yet his eyes are sharp in their dark sockets. Where to? He, he talks like that, you know, like, where to? You show him your ticket for Ossipi, you know? From there, you will connect to Rochester and Portsmouth, before the coastal line to New Newburyport, and then finally, Arkham. You should be able to afford a rail ticket for some of, uh, for at least some of the way. Otherwise, they will be the first of many long bus trips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The driver scratches the match and lights his cigarette. Psst. Odown says, "Sounds like a drunk. He might be a little bit drunk." Remember his driving. Oh no, you don't remember anything. It was a dream, and all memories of last time have faded. So do not meta game, okay? Do not meta game. And Team Seahome says, I just got this game today. That is awesome. And Paul says, sounds like Batman. Yeah, we might have to question him and he's going to say, I'm Batman or something like that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for watching. So, the driver scratches the match, lights his cigarette. The end flares as he drags a draw. Like, Then he exhales and gestures to the back of the coach. Luggage racks up there. So, now we start with the investigation sheet, you see? We already did this. We allocated, as you can see over here, we allocated all of these things. We allocated a 17 in strength, a 50 in con, 50 in size, 50 in dexterity, 40 in appearance, 60 in education, 60 in intelligence, and 80 in power, you know? Andrew Corden says, so basically Noble has deja vu. Yeah, yeah, he remembers something happened, but nothing else, you know? No, nothing else. He has a sense that of deja vu, but that, that's it, yes? So we did that. We, uh, uh, we allocated all the things. Remember that this game basically uses 100 dice, you know? So if, for instance, you have a strength of 70, which is a pretty good strength, you're fairly strong, and you have to like try to open a door, for instance, uh, you're gonna get like a check, you know? And uh, if you roll a D100, hey, we got, what the crap? <laughs> Team Sihon just tip 100 bucks via the stream elements, you know, PayPal thing. And he says, for the alien game. Thank you, Tim. Much appreciated. It will go towards the alien game. Hey, Jason and Max, with the sur it's also with the PayPal for the Friday stream during vacation. Thank you, Jason. Much appreciated. It will also go for the alien game, you know? We're going to see if we can buy an alien game, you know? 
So thank you, thank you very much, much appreciated. So um, what I was explaining about you roll a 100, you know, oh, we know what Deja means. Deems we're in the matrix. Yes. Uh, you roll a 100 and if you hit 70 or less, you succeed. If you roll more than 71 or more, you fail, you know, this is your like your percentage chance of succeeding. And the numbers to the right is half and one fifth. So if you do, for instance, a strength check, you know, you need to do 70 or less. If you do a, a hard strength check is you need to do 35 or less or an extremely difficult check, you need to do 14 or less. That's basically how this works. Yeah? So if you had, we, we, we uh, like I said, we got the investigator with all the things and we do. Ramming speed says, is this life? Yes, it is life. You know, it is a stream. We're streaming. Okay, so we did this, go to eight. Eight. The driver smokes and watches you as you drag the, the cases to the back of the motor coach. The rack is set inconveniently high on the vehicle. You get a grip on the heavier case. So if your size is 40, go to 23. If your size is higher than this, go to 38. Our size is 50, so we go to 38. East Ross Gaming says, my papa used to smoke his tobacco out of a pipe like that, lol. Yeah, yeah, I don't smoke, you know, because smoking is bad for your health. But I like to have the pipe handy because it, it gives you atmosphere. Also, you can point at things, you know, you can point at this and you can point at that, you know. Hey, we got another tip with the stream elements thing from Paul. He says, don't forget, never cross the streams. That is a good it's a good uh, advice. Thank you very much. Now I can say that we are almost at the point of me buying the alien game, which Tim recommended, you know, on Twitter. And I told him that the delivery was uh, like shipping from the United States to my country was uh, was uh, uh, as expensive as the game. So we're almost at the point that I can buy the game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome, you know, thank you. Odown says, I guess you could blow bubbles. Yes, we could blow bubbles. So, 38. The driver continues to enjoy his cigarette, watching you with keen interest as you struggle with the cases. You grit your teeth and heave the second one into place. Perhaps the residents of Arkham will have better manners. I don't think so, you know, because Arkham is notorious for having residents that when you talk to them, they sound something like this. Welcome to Arkham. Because, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of, they, they eldritch, you know, they kind of eldritch. Uh, that was a, did, did you like that effect? It was a good effect. Yeah. Okay, so we go to 233. Two thirty three. The driver flicks his cigarette into the gutter, like he's just he's, 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 he's littering, you know? He, he is a disgusting jackass. And steps into the motor coach. Its engine coughs into life. You board, grateful that you will be the only passenger for the initial part of your trip, at least. Odown says, welcome to an alternate universe. Yes. Um, where was that? Okay. With mixed emotions, you watch from the window as the tired avenues of your old home slip behind you, receding into the distance. For a few minutes, you can still see the church spire over the brow of a low hill. Then the rope dips and it is too gone. Arkham is your new home. You will travel there and make a new start. You know? And now this thing, uh, we, we add, like it says, the... Um, the, the the divided by by two and divided by five, which we already did, you know. Then go to 134. 134. 
Ramming Speed says, Yo, awesome man, showcase some more of your audio tricks. Here we got the audio tricks. It's, it's okay. The, 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 you know, like Jason says, that sound effect sounds like Mighty Cthulhu. Yes, exactly. You know, it sounds like Mighty Cthulhu. Oh, sorry. How do you expect to defeat me when you are but a mere mortal and I am forever? That's something that Mighty Cthulhu might say, you know? So, we're back here. And Pe Peggy Bradford says, in a cell next to the Joker. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was I reading? Oh, yeah. Um, at first, uh, the, the, okay, uh, 134. The coach uh, putters through the countryside. You know, it's an old bus. It goes like... <laughs> At first, the interior is stifling and your stomach lurches with every bend in the road. However, the driver opens his windows and by switching seats, you find a spot where the breeze hits your face. You soon relax uh, into the journey, observing the quaint little hamlets that the coach serves. A heavyset woman boards at one settlement, gives you a polite note, she gets off at the next one. The road rises a little, passing cornfields and orchards. The leaves are turning and the trees are alive with glorious reds and golds. You have just begun to doze when the driver takes a tight bend at speed. And now you see we add the size and constitution, divide by 10, and we get the hit points, which we have. We have 10 hit points, you know. Defeat with an endless supply of burritos, says O'Down. Burritos are delicious. You also have the lock score, which we completed. Our lock, lock score is 45, you know, and now what we need to do, we need to do a roll against our dexterity. Okay, so we're going to roll a d100, you know, first roll of the evening. So we activate dice cam. Let me just move this. Okay. Okay, people, first roll of the evening. Here we go. Forty-six. Forty-six. And our dexterity is fifty. This time we pass. If you remember last time, where well, we don't remember because it's all foggy and like deja vu. Last time we failed and we lost one hit point. But this time we passed. Forty-six and our dexterity is fifty. You know? So we pass. If you pass the dex roll, go to two sixty-one. That is awesome. We are off to a good start. Yeah? Perhaps we will not die this time. And Grassy says, hi, JC. What is in your pipe? The devil's lettuce? No, no, it's just, it's just a pipe. It has nothing. You know, I don't smoke. I use it to look more intellectual and also to point at things, you know. And Cantadea Sarabande, which I, I don't know if I pronounce it that, says, Siri interrupt. Well, that is not how Siri works. You need to say, hey, Siri. But Dan says you were drinking too much, most likely. So we passed. And it says, a desperate yell awakens you. You feel yourself slide from the seat as the driver spins the wheel and the motor coach plunges off the road. You grab hold of the seat in front, just in time to prevent a painful fall. A painful fall. The coach stops with a thump, you know. And Andy Nelson says, Bathomeps broccoli. You pay extra for the weed. Now you see what has happened. A Forson tractor has stopped in the road and your driver had to swerve to a rail ticket for at least some of the way. Otherwise, this will be the first of many long bus trips. No, no, sorry. To, uh, had to serve to avoid this steel obstacle. He leaps from his seat into the road, unleashing a string of curses at the farmer. You take a moment to catch your breath. Perhaps you should offer assistance? But the driver has already returned. He backs the coach up a little and threads it around the tractor, glaring at the farmer. You know? So we go to 71. But like I said, we already succeeded. You know? That was good. 71. You resume your journey. 
The driver takes the curves with more caution than before. He glances over his shoulder at you a couple of times. Sorry about that, he says in his Batman voice. That fellow was dumber than a hog. I'm Silas. What's your name? The accident was at least as much Silas' fault as the former, but it doesn't seem shrewd to antagonize the man while he is driving you through the middle of nowhere. Make up a name for your character and record it on your investigation sheet. We did it, you know? We are noble nickels. Oh, no one told me about the die cam. Dice cam. You need to tell me these things. You know, the dice cam was, it was, it was blocking the thing. So, uh, we are noble nickels. And we are 36 years old. You know, we are going to Arkham. And we are a private investigator. But you will see that uh, right at, at the end of this, of this section. The coach turns into a narrow road, which weaves uphill through woodland. Silence becomes chatty. Going to Arkham, huh? Can't say I ever heard of the place. Went to Boston once. Didn't like it. Too much hustle and bustle. You got family there? Special somewhere waiting? The afternoon is wearing on. You see no harm in confiding to Silence about your new life. A job, eh? What's your line? And... Remember, we are Noble Nichols, a private investigator, so we go to 249. 249. Hey, JC, uh, Siri, JC had to want to manage. G G Siri is like over there. She, she's not going to uh, hurt you, bro. Or she might. I don't know. Odan says Mephistopheles mighty meatballs. I, I don't know what's going on, you know? You are all, you, we're going down the happy squirrel path again, you know? Where people are just happy running around and we end up cooked because everybody has the survival instinct of a happy squirrel. Yeah? 249. You, skir you skirt around the details of the professional in your, uh, profession in your usual way, mentioning only that you have helped the police to clear up various problems in the past. Your heart pounds a little faster as you think of the post you have secured at the Blackwood Detective Agency, you know, in Arkham. You've had enough of investigating marital infidelity and blank, uh, bank clerks on the take. It sounds like the Blackwood Agency is just the opportunity you need to cut your teeth into some real villainy. You know? Silas narrows his eyes, but he says nothing. And now... It gives us a lot of stuff about the credit rating, the occupation skills, art, craft, these guys, law, lib library use, psychology, you know. We already put all of that in the character sheet. So as you can see in the character sheet, we got arts and craft, we got 40, you know. Um, Silverbird says, everybody just wants to push all the elevator buttons to see what happens. Exactly, you know, exactly. Survival instance of a happy squirrel. Arts and craft, we got 40, we got credit rating 20, we got disguise 50, so we're good at disguising, fighting 60, firearms 40, law 40, because we're a private detective, library use 50, which also because of the private detective, listen 40, locksmith 21, persuade 70, remember that we have a very high persuade score, which is good. Psychology 50, in order to like understand people, you know. Spot hidden 60, which is important for a private investigator. Stealth 40, because we're stealthy, you know. And survival 30, you know. Those are the points we allocated. Uh, it's a good thing JC is on vacation for the next two weeks for back to back daily live streams. No, I'm sorry, that happened like a month ago. Now we are back in the grind. So now we go to 128 because we our character sheet is full. You know? We go to 128. You realize Silas hasn't made a stop since the incident with the tractor. The motor coach winds his way uphill. However, your thoughts are interrupted as the roads crest a ridge and you are treated to a magnificent, magnificent view of the vista below. A creek snares through the valley breaking uh, uh, the rich autumn palette of the tree line. In the distance, the white mountains rise into a hazy cloud. There is no settlement, not even a cabin, as far as the eye can see. 
birds drift through the treetops and you can just make out what might be the two white-tailed deer uh, uh, lingering by the water. Perhaps you're making a mistake by moving to the city. Could you survive on your own in this lush wilderness? You have a base ability in most skills listed in brackets after the skill name of the investigator sheet. For instance, you have 20 in climb and a base dodge equals to your half death. And now you, you have to choose uh, four things for the occupation, which, like I said, we already did. You know, I think it was persuasion, firearms, and um, spot hidden, something like that. So it's all in the character sheet. You know, and now we go to 144. And like I said, this PDF, this PDF in particular, is free. So you want to play a little bit of this, you can do it. You, know? you want to expand, you buy the box of the uh, Alone Against the Flames. You know, uh, I mean, the, 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 the starter set box, which, which contains the Alone Against the Flames, a basic rule book, and three other adventures You know, for multiplayer. So 144. The motor coach rattles on through the hills, and Silas lapses into silence. The sky darkens behind you. Pink, uh, pinks uh, tinting the clouds as the sun descends. Finally, a welcome sight comes into view. A settlement on the crest of a hill. Only if you knew, noble Nichols. Only if you knew. This doesn't look like the pictures you've seen of OCP. OCP. <laughs> but perhaps you can persuade silence to stop while you stretch your legs. Minutes later... A harsh stuttering from the engine interrupts your reverie. Silas's frown and rattles the gear stick. He goes like, crack, 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 crack. It's, it's not good. You know? That was my gear stick impression. The motor coach falters in its ascent. Silas utters a curse you don't recognize and grinds his teeth, struggling at the wheel. You seem to inch up the hill until you reach the first building. Low dwellings constructed from a rough wrecked stone. Silas wretches the coach into a small bay of the road. He scrambles from his seat and makes for the engine compartment. And now we must choose to make a roll against drive auto or psychology, you know? For drive auto, we have... For drive auto, we have 20%. It is a standard here, you see, in the character sheet. And for psychology, we have... 10%. No, we have 50. I'm going to roll against psychology. You know, we need to beat 50. Okay, so back to the dice cam. Okay, people, get ready. Listen to this. Listen to this. Seventy nine. Seventy nine. So we we failed. You know, we failed. So we failed the roll. Go to one ninety four. It's a hard psychology roll. Guess it didn't matter either way. Ah, and we needed a hard success. You're right, you know. We needed half the skill, which we needed a twenty five. You know, so no, we we fail like with flying colors. We fail, you know. So we go to one ninety four. Hey Paula, how are you? She's been a fan since twenty sixteen. Welcome to the stream. Odan says, "Sounds like you are chuckling, <laughs> chuckling in the ice cubes." Yeah, well, we we fail. One ninety four. Silence opens the engine compartment open and sticks his head inside. The hot metal pops and sizzles. He pokes at various components. He goes like this, you know. Maybe if he, he had a pike, uh, a, a, a pipe, he could go like this, you know. Like this. Or shaking M M M M M M's says down, yeah. Uh, he pokes at various components, then withdraws and wipes his brow, smearing it with dark grease. I ain't sure what's wrong. Might be the old pressure. Might be something. Knocked off kilter when we took that spilt. Can't do much until the engine cools neither. 
and with the light failing. I reckon we'll be here through the night. Also, I'm Batman. He wipes his hand on a rag. The shadows from your surroundings are already long, and the air is chilly. You feel stiff from the journey, and a night in the rickety coach sounds unappealing. Silas sees your dismay. This here is Amberhead. Miles from any place. Oh, and I'm going to show you... Oh, the dice cam was still on. This here is Amberhead. Miles from any place. I only come through twice a week. But the folks here are good people. May let better keeps a spare room. She look after you. Up that alley, turn right, first house on the left. He scratches his cheek, looks again into the engine compartment, spits on the ground. Meet me here at 8 in the morning. We'll see how we stand. You see? Hey, Yellow Tiger, how are you? So this here is Amberhead, you see? Amberhead, if you look on the, on the top left corner, that is the house of May Ledbetter, you know? He, she has the rooming house. Uh, on, the, on the right, we have the beacon, which is some sort of, you know, black metal structure. We don't know what it is for. There are three main roads that all converge on the beacon. Silsbury Road, The Approach, uh, uh, Abbury uh, Avenue. And we come from the West Road, you see? And the West Road intersects with the East Road, which goes down uh, around the general store and then continues east, you know? In the left, you see to the left and the, in the bottom, you have the, the ruined church. Uh, on the right, on the top, you have the village hall next to the workshops. And there's a school over there, which I don't think we saw in the last playthrough. And the general store is like in the south, you know. So this is Amberhead. So we are heading to May Let's Better Roaming, uh, Let Better Roaming House. You know? And Steven says, Batman should know more about engines. I feel like he might be hustling you. It might be, you know, we don't know. And Silverbird says, oh no, Batman has possessed JC. When can we run away? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Remember, nothing weird ha has, has happened. We had a bad dream, you know. We had a bad dream before we were taking this journey. But now it's all gone, you know. As far as you know, we are, the, the boss broke down and we are in this, you know, very uh, uh, small town, Amberhead, you know, in the middle of nowhere. So... What can we do now? We have a choice. And now is this where you decide. We can go and look for May Let's Better. We can ask Silas where he will spend the night. Or we can challenge Silen, Silas about the breakdown. So what do we do? Do we go to May? Do we ask Silas? Or do we challenge Silas? What do we do? That is the first question. So, may ask silence or challenge Silas? What would you like to do? Make a choice, mortals. Okay, we got challenging silence, challenge, ask, 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 ask. Okay, the ask have them. We're going to ask Silas. We go to 251. Okay, so 251. You ask about Silas's plans. He gives the engine, uh, the engine a sour glance before answering. I've got acquaintances here in the village. Reckons one of them owes me a favor. Enough for bed and breakfast, in any case. He stares at his grubby hands. Probably won't stretch to a hot bath. You don't seem to have a lot of options. You fetch your cases from the back of the motor coach. The last thing you need for now is all your worldly possessions to disappear into some stranger's hovel overnight. You know? So, go to 267. We're going to head to, uh, to May Ledbetter. 267. You drag your cases between the solemn buildings. 
You feel surprisingly uh, heavy, uh, weary, considering you have spent all day sitting down. Silas's directions lead you to a modest dwelling with a slate roof. Uh, a nameplate le uh, read lead better. And underneath, a sign in neat copper plate reads lodging room. Remember, we are here at the top left of the map. When it says lead better, you know, it says uh, a rooming a house. Uh, over here is lodging room. You know, there we are. Steven says, I just remember to like the video in case anyone was forgetting like me. That is a good point, you know. Inodown says, Silas should ask if Noble, do you bleed? You will, you know, because he is Batman. The lane around you is gloomy, but a lamp flickers in the window. Batman pawns, yes. A breeze chills your face. You're not about to begin your new life by sleeping in the street. You rap on the weather beaten door. You go like this. Go to four. Four. After a moment, you hear footsteps inside the house. A bolt is drawn back, like, you know, or I'm doing the sound effects. You know? And the wooden door swings open, like, like this. Like, it, it swings open. And Paul says, smash that leg button. Hold, hold smash. I agree. It's a good thing. A figure with loose curls and a rough looking house dress peers at you. Her gaze takes in your traveling suit and your cases. Her voice has a slight Irish lilt. Hello, should I take it that you're looking for a room for the night? And there's a picture of May somewhere around. Let me see if I can show it to you because I remember seeing it the other day. Pretty sure there's a picture, like I said, of May somewhere around. What? It's not on the PDF, maybe? Oh, it appears it's not on the PDF. But I have it on the printed thing, you know? Let me just a second. Interesting. So the PDF is not exactly this PDF, you know? It is, it's a, it's a free, it's a free version. Where is the picture of May so you can see her? Oh, there we go. This is May led better. I'm gonna switch a second. You see? That's May. <clears throat> okay, so. So she opens the door and she says, hello, should I take it that you're looking for a room for the night? You inquire as to her rates, suppressing a grimace. As far as you've seen, the village does not offer you many alternatives. Oh, you'll find them very reasonable, she says. You look tired. I'm May. Come inside and we'll talk over a cup of tea. The Ledbetter house feels cramped with a low ceiling and simple fittings. Yeah, Paul, she's a snappy dresser. Uh, with a low ceiling and simple fittings. Peggy references look like Big Mama from Seven Days. Yeah, a little bit. Let me see other things because I got there's a lot of stuff. Okay, that guy is there in case we meet him. There's okay, there's that. There's Amber Head. Oh, there's that. There's this thing. Okay, good. I rem I gotta remember like the. The things we we have in the in the in the printed book, you know, there's a, a few pictures. In fact, I saw a picture of some jackets that we know from other realities, but I hope we don't meet him in this reality. If we don't encounter it until after, after the end of the adventure, I will show you who I was talking about. Uh, okay, so the Ledbetter house feels cramped with a low ceiling and simple fittings, but it is well kept and a cheerful fire crackles, uh, uh, rattles, sorry, uh, in the grate. The aroma of tea is soothing, and the cup warms your fingers. Have you come to Emberhead for the festival? asks May. So now we have another choice. 
is Russ Gaming says, I like when he says jackass. Yes. So we had a choice. We can explain what happens with Silas and the coach, or we can ask about the festival. So we explain or we ask about the festival. Those are our two choices. Explain or festival. What would you like to do? We can explain or festival. What do we do? We explain our situation or we ask about the festival. Living life says ask, explain, explain, ask. This is relaxing watching you tonight. Thank you, East Raymond. Ask. We got one more ask, two more asks, festival. Ask. I think, yeah, the asks have it. Okay, we're going to ask. You know? And Steven says ask. Okay, we're asking. So we're going to ask about the festival, you know, go to 21. Okay, so, <clears throat> well now, I suppose the festival is about the only reason folks come to Emberhead. I thought you had maybe come to, it, to study or uh, take uh, photographs. Well, it's not tomorrow night, but the night after. I suppose it looks very strange to a passerby. May tops up your tea. See, we're drinking tea. Also, we're drinking tea with like a, the finger, you know, like the, the, the dish. You know? uh, May tops up your tea. The spout chinks against your cup, like ding, and you, you drink it like this. You know? We've got the beacon, you see. One night every year, there's a torch lit procession, and we light the beacon on the cliffs. You've never seen the like of it. They say it keeps the spirit of the village alive for another year. It is a celebration. A celebration? She tails off for a moment and blinks. You can almost hear the blinking, like blink. But you didn't come here to listen to me blather, and you must be hungry. I can rustle you up a bit of stew. How would that be? When in doubt, pink out. Yes. You see, on the right, like at the east side of the town, there is the beacon, you know? Okay, so she offered us a little bit of stew, which is delicious and moist, if you ask me. So you ask about her rates and may name surprise so low, you accepted it without hesitation. The room is small, but comfortable, and the stew dark and hearty. After dinner, you have a couple of hours before your usual bedtime. So now we have another choice. We can talk to May some more. We can walk around the town to get our bearings. Or we can turn in for an early night. So what do we do? Talk to Mary, go to town, sleep. Those are our three choices. Mary, town, sleep. What do we do? We talk to Mary. I mean May, sorry, May. Not marry, may. Walk town or sleep. Walk town, town, marry. It's may, may, may. Go to town, town, take a walk. Okay. People overwhelmingly. We're going to go and get our bearings, you know. We're going to investigate because it is the good thing, you know. We're going to town. So we walk around and get your bearings. We go to the town. Go to 75. We're walking around, you know. May's brow creases when you announce your intentions to take a stroll. Oh, she didn't like that. Interesting. Mind how you go, she says. Emberhead surrounded by cliffs. And we don't have uh, your fancy strip lamps here, you know. None of them fancy strip lamps. Uh, we, we go dark, you know. And Stephen says, sounds like a good thing that a PI would do. Exactly, people. Now, now, we are not behaving like a happy squirrel, you know. We are behaving like noble nickels. PI. Good. So, Mary says, uh, mind how you go. Emberhead surrounded by cliffs. And we don't have your fancy strip, lights, uh, strip lamps there, here. 
Take the lantern. Watch your step. Outside, you see, you see what she means. The sky is overcast, and only a few glimmers of moonlight peek through the clouds. Without the heavy lantern, you will be walking in near total darkness. You cannot hope to get an overview of the village tonight. May Street, in a narrow passage, hemmed in by a squat, dark dwellings. Um, let me just show you this. As you can see, May, she's on the top left of the thing. And we are, you know, the, her, her street, no happy squirrel. Does that mean we are no nuts? Not so far, you know? Main Street is in a narrow passage hemmed in by squat, dark dwellings. At the end, however, it opens up. It opens up, you know? A white thoroughfare leads off to your right, which is that that says Silbury Street, you know? A, a crude sign names it Silbury Street. To the left, a few yards away, your light picks up the crooked post of a simple fence, and beyond that, the ground drops away into darkness. You know, over there. You take a couple of steps closer, but you can see nothing. Air from below cools your face. Then some instincts makes you look around. Go to 86. <clears throat> okay, people. We're, we're about to, it's about to get heavy. An in black figure stands in the road, about 20 yards behind you. It stares at you. You form the solemn impression that it will run at you and throw you over the cliff's edge. This is unsettling. Seeing that it has been spotted, the figure slips down an alley. So we can return to the safety of May Ledbetter's house we can confront the dark figure. What do we do? Do we go back to the house or we chase the dark figure? What do we do? House or chase the dark, dark figure? You gotta assess the danger, you know? But also, Lady Locke favors the bold. Jenny says, Chase. Silverbird says, confront the dark figure. Layla says, house, back house, chase, chase. Okay, we got four chases and two houses. Chase, one more chase and we do it. Chase, okay, we, we're doing it. We're going against uh, uh, following the dark figures. To confront the dark figure, go to 121. 121. As you approach, the figure takes a pace back, then another. It slips down an alley between two buildings. Okay, so to catch your target, you must make a track roll. You know? So now we're going to do the track roll. Yeah, we're chasing people, we're chasing. We need to do a track roll. So our track score is 10. Oh crap. That is, we had a 10% chance of succeeding. Let's go to the dice cam. Sixty-two. We failed. Sorry. So, if you fail, go to one thirty. Hey, we tried, you know. Now they know we know. And we know they know we know. And they know we know they know we know. But they don't know we know. The figure moves fast, with almost silent steps. You are hampered with a heavy lantern in an unfamiliar environment. You emerge from the alley into a dusty courtyard and can detect no sign of your quarry. You scratch around for a few minutes, but the figure has gone. Yes, Stephen, it was too dark, too unfamiliar, you know. It seems unwise to continue your stroll uh, through unknown dark streets uh, while this threatening presence is abroad. You head back to the Ledbetter house. 
Maid lets you in and settles back in her chair. Soon she begins to yawn. I believe I'll turn in. When would you like your breakfast? Go to 63. 63. As May stands, you hear a clunk behind you. You look over your shoulder, but all you can see is a wooden door, securely closed. May tuts, and she's going like... The young lady of the house. She'll have been listening to us. Ruth, come and greet our guest. There is a short pause, then the door creaks open. Like... Two white eyes peer at you from the gap between tousled hair and a rough nightgown, like this. What do you say? The eyes blink. Pleased to meet you. Now get back to bed. The door closes again. <clears throat> My daughter Ruth. Ten years this summer. She's a delight and a torment all in one. Don't worry. She sleeps in with me. She'll not disturb you. Good night now. You retire to your room. It is a little chilly, but you are too tired to worry about lighting the fire. The sheets are clean and the bed soon warms up. The silence outside is strange after living in a town for so long, but you soon drop off. Go to 154. 154. You dream of fire in the grate, coruscating colors shimmering through the dancing tongues of flame. At first they are tiny, almost microscopic, but they grow and grow until a kaleidoscopic inferno spills from the fireplace, spreading across the floor, up the sheets. You wake up with a start. Daylight glings through the curtains. You get up and examine the grate, blinking the sleep away from your eyes. It is quite cold. If you have taken any damage, you may heal one hit point back from your night's sleep. We have not taken any damage, so we're good. Silverbird says drop off a cliff. Oh, what? You might you might be a little behind, you know, try to press the like button on the thing because the, the cliff talk was like five minutes ago. Now we go to 166. 166. May seems to have no running water, but has supplied some in a ceramic jug. You freshen up at the wash stand and go in. She cooks a hearty breakfast and leaves you in peace to eat. At about 7.30, you are paid up, packed, and ready to go. You bid May goodbye, and she wishes you the best for your new career in Arkham. So, it says, if you succeeded in a skill roll last night and wish to investigate the results further, go to 178. We did not succeed. We failed, you know, because it was dark, and we were a bit, a little scared. Also, the... The, 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 the roll was just too high, so we didn't succeed. Otherwise, go to 192. One ninety two. You are already tired of your heavy bags. Hopefully Silas has repaired the motor coach and you can resume your long journey. A sourpuss he might be, but the old driver seems to understand his vehicle well enough. You pause to check your watch. Still 20 minutes early. And round the final corner, the motor coach is gone. That jackass left us. You put your bags down and search the area, trekking up and down slopes and around corners. At the end of the village, you trace the long road back as it winds around the hills. Eight o'clock comes and gone. There is no coach to be seen. A passing villager notices your bag. Looking for the bus? I heard him take off at first light. He's due back in three or four days. If you need a place to stay, May let betters rent the room. Very helpful, you know. The man raises his head to you and strolls into the village. You curse silence under your breath. Perhaps he went for parts. But you wonder if the old goat has stranded you here on purpose. He a jackass, you know. Go to 211. 218, sorry. 218. May is doing laundry and looks surprised to see you again. Forgot something? When you explain the situation, she offers to store your bags while you try to arrange alternative transport. You are grateful to relinquish the load. Nobody here has anything like a car. She strokes her chin and narrows her eyes. Maybe you can find somebody with a horse and a cart for your bags. I could ask around later. 
try Mr. Winters at the village hall. He'll know if anyone will. Or ask her around, uh, ask among the artisans. Their workshop are first left on Silbury Street. She reaches over and squeezes your wrist. Don't worry, I won't let you sleep. Uh, I won't see you sleeping in the street, money or no money. You thank me and turn to face the village. Go to number six. So, you wander the streets of Emberhead without any particular destination in mind. The village is built on a relatively flat upland with splendid views. To the north, Stephen, uh, Stephen says, May sound so nice for now. Yes, she is a nice lady. You know? To the north, the hazy tips of the white mountains reach for the heavens. To the south, the sparkling waters of Lake Winnipesaukee. Winnipesaukee, touch the horizon. The village itself takes less than five minutes to cross from edge to edge. You arrive on the winding road. Let me just put up the map. You arrived on the winding road um, uh, to the west. So we arrived to the west, you know, the winding road to the west. The only other road leads to the south, following a lower ridge of land as it turns east. In the southwest of the village, an open grassy space borders a ruined church, its graveyard cresting the, hill, uh, the cliffs. To the northeast, the three main thoroughfares meet at a, a, metal, uh, a raised black metal structure, the beacon, you know. It looms stark against the blue sky. So as you can see, we got Emberhead, we got the road, we, we came from the west, the other road goes south and then goes to the east. To the southwest, we got the ruined church, you know, with the cemetery like overlooking the cliffs. We got the main three thoroughfares that all converge in this black metal structure up a little bit up the hill to the east, which is marked the beacon, you know. So what do we do now? We can ask about transport at the local general store. We can seek out the village hall. We can walk down to the lower level and check out the eastern road. We can examine the large metal structure. We can explore the church. Or we can look for local people with their own transport, uh, with our transport needs. So, what do we do? General store, village hall, south road, metal structure, church, or talk to the people. Those are our choices. Peggy says, May is the Hotel California. You can check in, but you can never leave. Yeah, we're, we're not made a gaming. Do not make a game. Remember, May is a nice lady. So what do we do? Remember, General Store, Village Hall, South Road, Church, Metal Structure, or Ask to the People. Ask people. We got South Road. Jenny Talia says, interesting, the lake is in my home state. Well, your home state, if there is like a, a town called Emberhead, don't go there, you know. South Road, talk to people. Church, talk to people. We got two, pe two people saying talk to people. You might want to move, Jenny. Talk to the people, South Road, Church. We got a couple of South Roads. Three people, two churches. Let's see what the next says. Let's check out the road. Okay. We got a couple of south rows. We got three talk to the people and we got two churches. The next one decides. Come on, some, someone say something. <laughs> no one says something. I'm going to have to do the thing with the ones we have right now. Although chat might be lagging a little bit, I don't know. Love your content, bro. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Rerun. Okay, okay. We'll go with what we have. Talk to the people. It has it, you know. Ah, and Leila said church, but we already, you know, I already decided about, uh, about uh, talking to the people. So we're going to talk to the people, you know. Okay, so... 
And if you remember, this is a thing that we did not do the last time. Yeah, we're going to ask the people. Not far from the Ledbetter house, on the north side of Silsbury Street, there is an open courtyard, which you can see, you know, where the workshops are in the map. The rhythmic tattoo of a... Oh, I'm going to get the map oh, so you can see this. The rhythmic tattoo of a hammer uh, seems to announce your approach. The courtyard is the busiest location you have yet seen in Emberhead. It is bordered by a ring of workshops. Some are brick buildings, some are only huts, you know? There on the top of the map, it says workshops, you know, we're there. Uh, a blacksmith ceases to hammer, uh, thrusting something red and glowing into a bucket of cold water. A weaver looks up from his loom, blinking at you a, a moment before returning to his shuttle. A potter, engraver, and carpenter each work in their own space, exchanging friendly banter. You move am among the artisans, chatting about their work. Eventually, you bring up the question of export. Some of them send occasional packages with silos. Some restrict the custom entirely to villages. Villagers, you receive no suggestions about alternative transport. And now we're going to make a psychology roll, okay? So, what is our psychology thing? Psychology is 50. So we got a good chance. We got a 50-50 chance. You see? So, we're going to make a psychology roll. It is a standard psychology roll. Let's go to the dice. Twenty-seven. We succeeded. We succeeded. Success, you know, in the psychology role. Make us a duel. If you succeed, go one o six. One o six. Also, oh, well, it says here. Um, one of the workshops is shut up. When you stray close to it. The repartee between the craft people becomes awkward, almost forced. Interesting, you know? You may check mark the small box beside the psychology skill. Okay, so psychology, we check that. Why? Is because, yeah, better dice rolls this time. Because if we survive this adventure, we can roll to increase that psychology score, you know? I can't really see the numbers on top of the dice. Maybe a more downward light is needed. Not complaining, just letting you know. Well, we might, we might, let me, let me try something. There. And, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see, but we have the, we have uh, this, you know, you, you can, you can see better that. I don't know. This is what we can do, you know? So, um, uh, I'm going to get this thing out. Uh, so, we check mark the small box beside the psychology skill because we can increase this, you know? And now we go to 25. So, this was weird, you know? There was a store that was closed and we, we approached. The, the chatter amongst the artisans, it, it kind of became forced, you know? We got, now we go to 21, 25. You are beginning to get your bearings in Emberhead. Would you like to explore some more? You may choose another option from those below. Do not repeat a previous choice once you have tried four options or before that, if you are ready to move on, go to three. So we already tried one, you know? And over here, the map again of Amberhead. So, we can go and ask about transport at the general store. We can go to the village hall. We can go to the south road. Um, I mean, the eastern road to the south, you know. Let's, let's call it the south road. I'll trust your eye on the dice roll. Thank you, Jason. 
we can examine the large metal structure, or we can explore the church. Those are our options now. So, General Store, Village Hall, Southern Road, Metal Structure, Church. What do we do? Peggy says Village Hall. Remember, Village Hall, General Store, South Road, Metal Structure, or Church. I, I also trust JC, usually he tells us we fail, yeah. Village Hall, Road, Church, Village Hall, Road. We got two, two Village Halls, two Roads, one Church. Eastern South Road, we got three Roads, two Village Halls, and one Church. Road. Okay, we're going to the road. A lot of people said road, so we're going to the road. One fifteen. Yeah, we got the roads. The air is fresh and the walk down to the lower ridge invigorating. You notice cultivated fields stretching through the lowlands around Emberhead, and among the crops, some livestock. No horses. Are you going to have to make your onward journey on foot? Further down, the road skirts the edge of the ridge and descends. There are a few scattered hovels here, with signs of habitation. They are set a substantial distance apart. As you examine them, a door opens, and an older man steps out. He wears a bed raggled suit, but carries a piece of cloth, which he tosses over his head like a hood. As he does this, he sees you and freezes. Make a luck roll. If you succeed, oh, uh, and the map goes. If you succeed, turn to 129. If you fail, turn to 135. We're gonna make a luck roll. And our luck right now is Our luck is 45, so we got to beat a 45. Here we go, people. Dice cam. Here we go. Sixty-two. We failed. We failed our luck roll. So one thirty five. Rerun, re rerun. You might be a little bit behind on the stream, man, because we we asked this like two minutes ago. Everybody, make sure to pr press if you're watching on YouTube or something. Uh, press what it says live, you know, because you might be a little bit behind. So 135. The strange man breaks into a run, fleeing from you along the ridge. His gait is lopsided, but his movements have a maniacal intensity. If you give chase, turn to 150. If you have better things to do, turn to 160. What do we do? Do we chase or we walk away? Make your choice, people. Do we chase this strange man that started running or do we walk away? Give chase, of course, says Yellow Tiger. Living life says walk away. Layla says chase, chase, walk away, walk away, chase, 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 we're going to chase. We're doing this, people. Huh? We're going hardcore on this one. 150. You break from the road and pursue the man, feeling wild grass snatch at your feet. He sprints around the ridge attempting to elude you behind the very rocks that support the metal structure, high above. To catch the man, you must make an opposed roll, which you versus his dexterity. The man has dexterity 38. He scores a hard success on a roll, of course he does, of 19 and under, and an extreme success on a roll of 7 and under. 
Make the oh no, they, they're telling us. You, know, you see, we need to make the man dexterity roll that makes your dex roll. Okay, we're gonna make the dex roll. Okay. <laughs> Rerun says I did not realize that I bumped the band uh, the the bar down below. Yeah. So we need to make okay. Compare your levels of success. An extreme success beats a hard success, which beats a regular normal success, which beats a failure. If there is a draw, the higher skill value wins. Okay, okay. Okay, we're going to do this, people. We're going to do this. So, we're going to roll for the guy first. Let's see what this guy rolls. Let me go to the dice cam. This guy rolled a 98. He failed like a jackass. You see? He failed like a jackass. Okay. Our dexterity is... Uh, what's our dex? 50. We're going to roll. Come on, big money, big money, people. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So we we had a hard success and he had a jackass failure. So we did it, people. We won the opposed skill roll. That was awesome. So we go now to 172. We won. We won. 172. Good dice, you know? Good dice. Yeah, we won. You draw close to the man. He glares over his shoulders and sees you. Damn you, he spits and slows down. Can't you leave a fellow be? You assure him you mean him no harm. We, talk, we can't talk here, he says. Follow me. Go to 142. Nice. Nice. It was good. It was good. 142. You follow the man around the outcrop. He glances up, then steps between two rocks and vanishes. Closer inspection reveals a narrow channel leading into the cliff. There is just enough life to see a small, natural chamber within. You will be uncomfortably close to this man if you go inside. We can follow him or we can keep our distance. What do we do? If you want my advice, I would follow him, you know? In for a penny, in for a pound. We are a private investigator. This guy wants to go hardcore on us. We're going to go hardcore on his ass. So what do we do? Do we follow or do we keep our distance? Layla says follow. Yes. Follow, 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 follow. We follow, you know? We kick his ass. We go to 191. With weary steps, you squeeze between rocky outgrowths and enter the concealed chamber, almost banging your head on the low ceiling. The man settles back against the wall and watches until you draw close. Then he slides back his hood. We need to make a sanity roll. And if you fail, we lose one sanity. Okay, so we need to make a sanity roll. Our sanity is 60. So let's make a sanity roll. Oh, a dice can, sorry. Ninety-three. So we failed our sanity roll. Uh, so we're gonna lose one point of sanity. We're going in a big bananas, you know? Okay, so we go to fifty-nine. We lost one point of sanity. 
Yeah, Yellow Tiger, we're going to be bananas, you know? We go to 199. Don't worry, don't worry. No, you, in, in Call of Cthulhu, you, you lose sanity, you know, you go bananas. Oh, and I have, I have a picture of these guys. Let me read, read this to you and then I'll show you the picture. Some of the man's face remains a strip from the side of his jaw to, see, to his right eye socket is healthy and pale, if aged. But the left side is consumed by angry scar tissue. This guy is two-faced. One eye droops, hooded by melted flesh, and the nostrils on that side is pulled open to leave a gaping hole. The disfigured man studies your reaction with one good eye. Name's Arbogast. William Arbogast. Guess I don't need to ask what brings you to Emberhead. <coughs> I'm gonna show you. Sean says, so when do you start hearing voices? I, I don't know. I don't know, but eventually, you know? Don't worry, don't worry, Paul. Okay. This... This guy is... William Arbogast. You see? That's William Arbogast. His whole left side of the face burned. That's not on the PDF. It's on the printed thing you get with the set, you see? So, if you claim to have come for the festival, go to 206. If you admit that Silas has stranded you here, go to 214. Bringing more Batman characters in. Yes, exactly. So what do we do? Do we lie or do we admit? That is the question. Do we lie and say that we came for the festival or do we admit that Silas stranded, you know, him here? Big screen, please. What what big big screen? Oh oh, sorry sorry. I forgot to, I forgot to switch to this. Just just a second, just a second. I want to show you Silas. And in the meantime, you can vote. What do we do? There's Silas. You see. There, that is Silas. Admit, 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 admit. Okay, people are saying we, we are going to admit. I would personally would have asked about the festival, you know, because this guy seems to know, but we're going to admit. 214. <clears throat> that swollen mouth gives a little twist downward. Son of a bitch has red blood. His fingers tighten into a fist. Go to 221. Arbogast fixes you with a lopsided yet intense stare. You seek me out, huh? He looks up at the cave ceiling. Which one of them told you about me? Never mind. Don't matter. Truth is, they fear what I know. They would never come at me direct. Don't want to end up like old Arbogast. He giggles. A high-pitched sound is all the more grotesque coming from those bloated lips. Then abruptly, his gaze turns to iron. Sorry, this is second... Over here. Uh, 221. Yeah. Emberhead died 40 years ago. Shattered by flame. Consumed by the stars themselves. The ancient hill was cleansed by inferno. And from the blackened ground came new life. As it is the way of things. The Abernaki knew. Arbogast wiped his nose on his sleeve. Except none of that happened. 
the flames were turned away. The necessary death postponed a year, and a year again. And now those up there, he stabs a, a, scrawny, a scrawny finger at the ceiling, think themselves savior of the village, think they can defy the great old ones. Ea, Kutuga, he shakes his head. With strange eons, their lives matter less than the blink of an eye. A, a fierce intelligence burns in his gaze, but you suspect Arbogast may be quite insane. He is a bit bananas, you know? Should his mood change, it would not be difficult for him to seize one of those loose rocks and crack your skull with it. So, we can ask Arbogast about the Obernaki. We can ask him about the great old ones. We can ask him about the villagers. Or we can leave. So what we do? Abenaki, great old ones, villagers or leave? That is my question to you. Can we trust him? Best Batman asks. You see, Ember had died 50 years ago, but it didn't because the villagers postponed the thing, you know? Villagers, villagers, Abernaki, old ones, great old ones, villagers, leave, villagers. I'm seeing a lot of villagers. We're gonna go with villagers. We ask about the villagers. 245. I would have liked to know about the great old ones, but we're asking about the villagers. Arbogast face twist, creasing the scarred cheek. Puh. Their fathers and mothers knew the truth. They listened. They knew their doom and found their place within it. They looked into their own hearts and did the unspeakable. The current brood have the arrogance of children. Everything has been given to them and they assume it always will. He glares at the cave ceiling. They would that I left or died, that I took the old words with me. But mark what I say, those who live in high places have further to fall. Arbogad runs a hand through his hair. A white strip is missing on the left side, displayed by scar tissue. He climbs to his feet. Go to 259. Arbogast pauses in the shadows. There's something about you. Something the previous ones never had. Perhaps you can make it through. If you want to hear more, meet me again after dark. Nine o'clock. The graveyard on the other side. He leaves a gnarled finger, you know? So let me just show you here. This was a, actually a good thing. So we are in the south, you know? And he, he tells us that if we want to talk to him again, We can meet him at the graveyard, you know, in the ruined church. You know? He leaves on our finger. Don't be follow, else I won't be there. This ain't the time of years for a showdown. Arbogast wipes his nose on his sleeve again. Go now. Their eyes are on me. And strangers, and stranger, don't try to run. You'll never make it. You emerge into the sunlight blinking and more than a little shaken. You have discovered a secret. We discovered a secret, people. Good show. Later tonight, the text will offer you a chance to follow up on a previous appointment. At that point, if you want to meet with Arbogast again, add 20 to your current entry number and go to that new entry. So... I'm going to write down add 20 for the previous appointment. We get a secret, people. Now we go to 160. 160. You turn back to the road and your core business, getting out of Emberhead and onwards to OCP. The ridge gives you a good viewpoint from which you can see the course of the road. 
It winds with the hills, disappearing into woodland for a while before emerging further on. You lose sight of it somewhere, towards the second patch of woodland. By your best estimation, this is at least six or seven miles distant. You see no other settlements or traffic. It may be worth taking a chance and walking. The weather is still mild, but you will need supplies before you attempt it. We go to 25. So, and Paul says he's going to need to bleach that shirt as many times as he wipes his nose on his sleeve. Yes, he goes like, yeah. 25. We're back at the selection uh, and we have two more investigation options. So, we can go to the general store. We can go to the village hall. We can uh, look at the metal structure or we can go to the church. Those are our choices. Village hall, general store, metal structure, church. What do you want to do? Village hall, says Stephen. Store, says Layla. Village hall, general store, metal structure, or church. You get almost one of each. Metal structure. We have one of each. People, okay, two churches now. Three churches. Village hall. Church, church. Okay, we got, we got four churches. Okay, church. We go to the church. And I'm marking down one more thing. We go to explore the church. Remember over here, we are in that church that you can see to the west of the village. You know, the ruined church. So. 34. You cross the street towards the church. As you glance to your left, your gaze alights on the large metal structure. Something bothers you about its positioning. You back up and look again. Yes, Amberhead's central thoroughfare points directly at the structure. It seems too precise to be a coincidence. You see, they are pointing at the metal structure. Jenny Talia says, not many hate watchers. That is awesome. You press on and drawing through the shadow of the church. The building is in a sorry state. The top of the steeple, uh, steeple is missing. A ragged gash of splintered boards marking its absen absence. And the floors beneath it have collapsed. It appears to have torn to the roof of the main building as it fell. Only the back half is still intact. The white paint, which once covered the church, has yellowed and peeled. It seems safe enough to explore the rear section. All pews are stuck against the wall, choked with mildew. Most of the windows are broken. You guess this church has been disused for about 20 years. There is little more to interest you. Now we're going to make a riddle roll. You may have a bonus die. Oh, we're going to get a bonus die. Roll the tens percentage die twice and take the lower. Okay. So, a riddle roll. What is our riddle? Is uh, our riddle is zero five? Okay, so we're gonna roll it. Seventy two, and we roll the die, the the tens die again. We can still make it, people. We need a double zero. Ah, uh, twenty four. We fail. We fail the riddle thing. Well, you see, we got riddle, we got zero five, so it was extreme. We had a 5% chance of doing this. So we failed. We go to 25. Hey, mouse girl, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Don't worry, don't worry, you know. We are back by the grace of the great old ones, I mean, of the elder gods. And we are investigating the village of Emberhead, you know? Okay, we got one more choice, one more chance to investigate, you know? So, we can go to the general store, we can go to the village hall, or we can check out the metal structure. What do we do? General store, 
village hall metal structure. This is our last chance. You have to decide. They see me rolling, they hate him. Israel's Gaming says Village Hall. I mean, Steven says Village Hall. R Ross Gaming says Metal Structure. Structure. Village Hall. Metal Structure. Okay. We got three metal structures, two uh, hall, one store, two stores, another metal structure. If we get one more metal structure, I'm guessing we're going to the metal structure. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Okay, metal structure. Yeah, another metal structure. Okay, we go to the metal structure, people. We are going to the metal structure. 57. And we have spent all of our chances to explore the village. So, <clears throat> You walk up the approach, let me just put up the map, the approach, the most central of the village's major streets. It points directly at the odd metal structure. As you emerge from the shade of the nearby buildings, you are greeted by a magnificent panorama spread from the north to the southeast. The last colors of fall tint the hills in a sleepy gold. The structure, by contrast, is made from uncompromising iron, cinch black. It supports an immersed curved platform at the level of your head. And actually, I'm going to show you the metal structure, because there's a picture here in the book. You know, That's one of the things I like about the books, you sometimes get the pictures. So, I'm going to show you the metal structure. There it is. Let me go big. This is it. That is the large metal structure, you see? The beacon. Um... It supports an immense curved platform at the level of your head. Further struts snake up to a central point. It looks like they may have some kind of sculpture at one time, but are now twisted and mental beyond recognition. Sean Fisher says, Life calls, killed, crying, wife dying, love the streams. Okay, don't worry, Sean, this is going to be up as soon as your YouTube is done processing. Not the beacon of hope from some days today? No, no, it's not the beacon of hope. Um... An older gentleman pauses, looking up at you with roomy eyes. Are you here for the festival? He asks. That's the beacon. When they light it, night after next, you'll be able to see it ten miles away. He gives a little nod of satisfaction, then moves on, leaning on his walking stick. Now you notice bundles of wood, tied and stacked against the buildings nearby. Perhaps this festival would be an interesting diversion, but you really must head to Arkham as soon as possible. You know? Make a spot hidden roll. Okay, we're gonna make a spot hidden roll. Spot hidden, we have 60. So we have a 60% chance we're going to the dice cam. The beacon of no hope, maybe. 60% yeah. chance, people. Big money, big money. Ah, crap. 68. Damn it. Crap. We failed. We did not succeed on the spot hidden check. 25. Okay, so we already tried it through a four auction, so we go to number three now. Uh, oh, number three is not... Okay, we have to move manually then. There was no link. Number three. Your morning exertions have left you hungry. 
you roam the streets of Emberhead looking for sustenance. There is nothing resembling the busy cafes of your hometown or anything that might be called a restaurant. It is beginning to look like you will have to get supplies from the general store when May Ledbetters comes down the street with a girl trailing in her wake. Yeah, sorry, just our luck, you know. But it, this is, you know, it happens. It happens. Call of Cthulhu, it happens. Uh, uh, Le uh, May Ledbetter comes down the street with a girl trailing in her wake. This must be Ruth. As she notices you, she races past her mother and approaches you with a smile like this. Maybe not that creepy, but a smile. This is a different Ruth from the shy creature of last night. As she reaches you, she stops and stretches her arms up in celebration. Like, yay, you see? She looks up into your eyes. Abruptly, the smile drops from her face and she looks several years older. Get out before the festival, she hisses. Get out. She blinks hard, then scuttles back towards her mother. So this creepy little girl just told us to get out before the festival. We don't know why. She told us, get out. She's hiding things, you know. Mouse girl says, says cue the creepy little girl. Yes, you know. If she had a beard, we would know she's hiding things. She does not have a beard, but she's still hiding things, you know. Correlation does not mean causation. Something like that, I don't know. May approaches, wrapping an arm around her daughter's shoulder. Around her daughter's shoulder. She smiles. How are you getting on? Have you found transport? Startled, you explain the frustrations of the situation. I try Mr. Winters in the village hall. He's always in uh, enough an afternoon. You'll be hungry by now. Help yourself to any food in the house. The door's not locked. You glance at Ruth, where she has squirreled herself behind her mother's leg. Her eyes implore you to silence. What do we do? Do we ask Ruth about what she said? Do we ask May about what Ruth said? Or we say nothing? What do we do? Ask Ruth about what she said, hopefully in a stealthy manner, but we don't know. Do we ask May about what Ruth said? Like, why this creepy little girl told me to get out of town? Or we, we shut the hell up, we say nothing. Ask Ruth, ask Ruth, ask Ruth, May, ask Ruth. Okay, we go with ask Ruth. We're asking the creepy little girl, people. You crouch down and ask Ruth what she meant. It's scary at the festival, Ruth says. It's bright and hot and the flames go all over. Her face and voice are both childlike. This abrupt shift is disturbing. You suppose all ch children do unfathomable, unfathomable things. May rolls her eyes and tosses her daughter's hair. Ruth looks at the ground. I think we screwed up, people. I think we might have screwed up. Go to 22. Might have been better to keep, keep the mouth shut. You take your leave of the lead batters and head towards their house. The door opens easily. In the low kitchen, you make a meal from stodgy bread and leftover stew, which is needless to say, delicious and moist. As the, wind, as, as the little window offers a view to the mountains. If you learned one thing this morning, is that Emberhead Street hold little to occupy the visitor from out of town. But there are still about five hours of daylight remaining. You could take some provisions and the bare essentials from your luggage and set out in hopes of reaching another settlement before dark. Or you could ask advice from this Mr. Winters. What do we do? Do we get some stuff and try to leave town or do we talk to Mr. Winters at the village hall? What do we do? 
prepare to walk out of town or go to the village hall to talk to Mr. Winters. Moss Girl says leave. Layla says talk. Nuff says, says GTFO. Huh? Winters. Creepy girl said not to try. Yeah, you're right. The creepy guy said not to try to leave. That is right. Get out, prepare to walk out of town, village hall, talk. Mr. Winters, get supplies. I'm going to make an executive decision because we got a lot of talks as well. Talk, yes. We're going to talk to Mr. Winters. Because remember, the creepy guy said... Yeah, we got a lot of Winters, okay. The creepy guy say not to try to get out of village. It was impossible. So we're going to go and talk to Winters. Eleven. The village hall, remember, this is the map. We're going to the village hall, which is like north of the beacon. You see? There's the village hall. The village hall overlooks the lower north ridge of the village. You walk along Silbury Street to find it, conscious of the oppressive black metal structure frame at the end of the road. The shutters of the hall are open and some windows left ajar. There is no knocker, but a little bell over the entrance tinkles as you push the front door. It goes like ding Inside, a sturdy door to your right is marked private. To your left, an opening leads through to a bright room. You take a few steps inside. Benches light the walls and there are two notice boards mounted between the windows. What do we do? Examine the notice boards or knock on the closed doors? What do we do? Notice boards or closed door? What should we do? Do we take a look at the notice boards? Do we knock on the closed doors? That is the question right now. We are on live chat, we're good. Knock on the door, examine the notice boards, notice boards, 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 boards. Okay, boards. A lot of people started saying boards. Okay, 17. And Elvis said, order pizza. Not a bad idea. 17. The floorboards creak beneath you as you cross the room. You feel a slight spring in your step. Perhaps this room is used as a gymnasium for the village children. One notice board appears to be for the adult of the community and one for the children. The former looks neglected, featuring handwritten advertisements for household items and a yellow note about telegraph pricing. There is nothing about the festival. The children's notice board has a schedule for weekly crochet services and a number of paintings obviously done by the children themselves. Most are incoherent, though colorful. At best, as you can tell, they depict fireworks or perhaps the tale of Joseph from the book of Genesis. One has lost a pin and hangs upside down. It shows a giant bird attacking Emberhead. Or it might simply be that the artist has not yet mastered the subtleties of scale. We're gonna make a spot hidden roll. Hello, Epic Man. If you succeed, go to 30. If you fail, go to 37. So, spot hidden. We got 60. Time for the dice cam. We need to beat a 60. Hey, hard success. 30. We did it. We succeeded. We go to 30. We go to 30 and we also mark the spot hidden thing. There. Yeah. 30. As the afternoon sun hits the floor, you notice something curious. The boards under the window are newer than the boards in the center of the floor. The frames also show signs of having been replaced in the recent past. Perhaps rain leaked in and rotted the wood. You may now check mark the small box beside the spot hidden skill. Now go to 37. 
37. Come on. Oh, snow link. Okay, 37. 37. The door scraped behind you. A middle-aged, bespectable, bespectacled man appears in the doorway. May I help you? You explain you are visiting on May Ledbetter's recommendation. Oh, well, I'm Clyde Winters. I'm not sure I can help you, but would you care for some coffee? I'm partial to a cup in the afternoon. He gestures to the open door behind him. This seems like a worthwhile opportunity and you are a little thirsty, you know? So we go to 43. Sorry. 43. You step through the door marked private. The other side of the village hall is in marked contrast to the public space. The room is compact, lined with shelves of book and files uh, and file alcoves. One corner is reserved for a tiny pantry and what is presumably a water closet. You study Mr. Winters as he feels the percolator. Although thin on top, his hair is oiled and neatly swept back. His suit is a sober affair and well tailored even if the cut is a little old fashioned. A lesser man working alone might have loosened his bow tie for comfort. On the desk against the opposite wall, you notice what looks like a telegraph set. Let me see, I think there is a picture of Winters. One second. Because, like I said, there might be a picture of Mr. Winters. Oh, no, this this is Silas. Look at this. There was a picture of Silas. I want to show you. This jackass is Silas. You see the guy from the bus? This guy. This is Silas. He looks like a jackass, you see? I thought it might have been Winters, you know, but uh, that was Silas. Okay, so, yeah, look at that jackass. So, we may ask about the telegraph immediately, or we can make small talk with Mr. Winters. What do we do? Telegraph or talk? That is the question. Do we ask about the telegraph immediately? Or do we make small talk? What do we do? Telegraph or small talk? Small talk, small talk. Small talk. One more small talk. Yeah, okay, small talk. We go to 49. Okay, 49, sorry. Yep, we're going to talk. The pot begins to gurgle as you exchange pleasantries with Winters. Living here is a trade-off, like so much in life. He looks past uh, you at a high shelf. I could wish for access to a proper library, of course, but I know myself well enough. I'm strictly a dabbler, and the cities... His face wrinkled in distaste. Too many people, everybody rushing and shouting. We have a, spe a special place here in Amberhead. And someone must accept responsibility for keeping it so. That was my father before me. And now the duty falls to me. He lifts his chin and straightens up. This evening, as the sun sets, look out at the landscape around the village. We have peace up here, halfway to the stars. Are we not privileged? Is this not worth the hardships we must accept? He looks at you speculatively. This seems like a good time to ask about the telegraph. Go to 56. 56. The telegraph? Hmm. Much as we value our isolation, we do need the link sometimes. You were hoping to send a message? I must apologize. The line has been down for two weeks. I reported the fall, of course, but they're not so speedy when the problem lies in a rural area. I'm expecting a repair the day after next. I do appreciate how frustrating this must be. The coach is due in, what, three days? But I think he's going west. Perhaps you might engage a wagon. One of the farmers might. You explained that you have asked a few of the residents already, but to no avail. 
Tell you what, Winters pours you a steaming cup of coffee. The dark liquid smells rich and strong. It's good coffee, you know, and you're thirsty. When the repair crew arrives, I'll ask them to take you back with them. How would that be? They might want a dollar or two to grease the wheels. The day after tomorrow. Less than ideal, but it's the first real opportunity you've had. And it's not like you're going to like get burned in some ritual like in two days, you know? So you have time. Don't worry, you have time. Now we can thank Winters and leave, or we can ask about the library. What do we do? Do we leave, or do we ask about the library? That is now the question. Do we leave? Do we ask about the library? Yellow Tiger says law. Steven says library, 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 ask, library, library. Okay, we ask about the library, 62. It's a good thing, you know, we are not behaving like a happy squirrel like the last time. We are investigating. We're doing the things. You make a small but flattering remark about a couple of the volumes in his shelves. Winter's blushes with pleasure. Well, of course, they're not my personal collection. They belong to the village, he says. But I did select most of the recent items. This is the community library, you see. I put up the private sign to stop people just wandering from meetings in the other room, but this is really a public space. And Jason says, leave, you know he's pouring you a cup of life. We don't know, do not metagame. We don't know, remember, we don't remember anything about what happened last time. We are a bit suspicious because of what the creepy little girl said and what the guy with, with you know, a two-face, you know, Harvey Dent, what he said. But still, we have not seen anything like strictly out of the ordinary. You scan the shelves. There is a sparse but respectable collection on mathematics and the sciences, passable sections on history and arts, and a shelf of literature. He has a few lowbrow novels tucked away in a corner with tidy copies of Bizarre Tales magazine. Quality does not always equate to popularity, I'm afraid. Winters gives you an apologetic smile. To take the time for some research in the library or to leave what is light outside. What do we do? Research or leave? Now, what do we do? What would a private investigator do? We do research or we leave? Research, 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 research. Okay, good. We're doing good things now. We're going to do a little bit of research. We go to 68. Winters is happy for you to spend the rest of the afternoon in study and offers you an upright but comfortable chair. You have enough time to pursue one line of research in depth. One line of research in depth. Do we read about the history of the area? Do we read about the festival? Do we read something about the sciences? Or we read some weird fiction? What do we enhance our knowledge? History of the region, the festival, science or weird fiction? History of the area, says Leila. History. I agree, history is a good thing. History, festival, history, history, festival, the area, okay. History of the area, 74. There is no single book on the history of the area and you have to put together a picture from a variety of slim, specialized volumes. There seems some suggestion that the hill upon which Emberhead is built was a place of reverence uh, for the Abnaki or Abnaki a native tribe whose name means people of the downlands. The tribe made an annual journey to the hill as the leaves turned to the deepest hue of sunset. There are some references to sun rituals performed in the area, but these are not conv convincingly attributed. 
The region was caught up in King George's War, and in 1746, British colonial forces counterattacked in response to a raid by the Wabanaki Confederacy, 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 which included the Abenaki. The king's men gave no quarter, and the few survivors among the natives were driven from the area permanently. There seems uh, no confirmed date when Emberhead itself was founded, although there are accounts of settlers on the hill from shortly after the end of the Revolutionary War. 99. Interesting, you know? The people of the dawn. The afternoon wears on. You have not quite finished your reading when Winters glances out of the window and stands up. He clears his throat. Make a credit rating roll. If you succeed... Okay, we need to make a credit rating roll. Our credit rating is 20. This is going to be a hard one, people. Let's go to the dice. A burial round. Sounds Stephen Kingish to me. Yeah, we all know. People, credit rating roll. 20. Oh, 31. We fail. We failed. We go to 105. Damn. I'm afraid I have some errands to run before dark, so I must close the library for today. I do hope you will return tomorrow afternoon if you are so inclined. You leave the building with Winters, waiting as he locks up. You thank him for the coffee and the access to the library. He disappears off down an alley. You hope to be away from the village before tomorrow afternoon. But it's good to know that there is a, nice, as there is a place you can occupy yourself. Note, go to 180. 180. As the light fades, you return to the Ledbetter house and eat a light supper. May is unusually taciturn. Ruth's side flicks to you several times during the meal. There is an urgency there you cannot quite interpret. Afterwards, May ushers the girl into their room. You have been in Emberhead for barely one whole day, and you already feel confined by it, both geographically and socially. The evening seems to offer little. We can do some stargazing, we can attempt to speak to Ruth, and if we have a previous appointment, this is the time to follow it up. So what do you want to do? Stargazing? Attempt to talk to Ruth? Or we... The secret we uncovered, we followed the previous appointment, which, if you ask me, is what we should do. But, you know, some people might want to go stargazing. Stargazing, Ruth, or we follow the appointment. Follow up, secret appointment, appointment. Okay, people. He's Ross Gaming said Ruth. <laughs> okay, appointment. So we add 20. We need to go to 200. We're gonna talk to that, to Two-Face, you know, Harvey Dent. 200. Enough says the stars. 200. Abogast is not at the appointment meeting place. You give him 10 minutes, but he doesn't show. You curse the old crank and head back towards May's house. A hand snakes from a doorway and grabs your arm. You jump at the sight of that half face, glimpse in starlight. One of them's near, he whispers. Watching, come with me. Hey, we got uh, the we got the 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 the, the stream elements tip uh, the, with the PayPal. Jason says just got the stimulus chat, sharing the love. Thank you, Jason. Much appreciated. We are definitely getting the aliens. A game, so stand by for that. Eventually, one that I get is an, an, an aliens like Colonial Marines game. We're gonna get that with the donations from this stream. So eventually, in the future, I don't know how long, long is that going to take. We will play that. So get ready. 
Like I said, all the money from the donations go towards the nerdy things, you know, because of the nerdy things. So thank you. Thank you very much. So, Harvey Dent, also known as um, 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 uh, Arbogast, uh, he says, one of them is near, watching, come with me. Go to 169, nice. 169. Arbogast leads you across the thoroughfares, sleeping between houses. The metal structure looms at the end of the street. Silent now, he says. But the beacon will come alive tomorrow night. He ushers you into a little alcove behind the village school. And now I'm going to show you because we have not been to the village school before, you know. So the village school, as you can see, is on the south part of the town, you see. Uh, to the east of the general store, there's a school. That's where we are right now, to the south of the village, you know. Jason says, that's cool. I've seen the game you're talking about on Twitter. Yes, exactly. We're going to get that. We're going to play that. It's going to be awesome. So he ushers you into a little alcove behind the village school. Arbogast glances behind you, then sits down. Again, you feel uncomfortable in proximity to that scar visage. One melted eye, uh, eyelid lifts. You don't have long. Understand this. I was the conduit, the interpreter. Before that fool Winters and his fancy words, the things which come to Emberhead can, care not for words. Those idiots think this is a ritual of sacrifice. He spits on the grass. It is a ritual of control. They know the words, but they do not comprehend the forces they call. He sniffs and sits back. No, you have no time for more questions. I will teach you how to end it in the moment when all is lost. You can return this hill to the earth, to the death that came 40 years ago. I have tried it myself, but his head sacks. I no longer had the concentration. The chant is simple. I can teach you it but you must perform it with a clarity of mind that I have lacked for years. If you will learn this strange chant, go to 175. If you have had enough of our bugas, go to 182. What do we do? Do we learn the strange, powerful chant, or do we get out? Choose. Learn the eldritch chant, or run like a scared little rabbit. Learn the chant. Yes, we're going to learn the chant. Nice. We go to 175. 175. Fuzroda, exactly. You feel very dislocated from reality as you sit on a cliff top behind a school at night, learning a chant by... Uh, it's weird. By road from a madman. Arbogas is careful to teach you in sections. He glances into the sky. Won't work right now. Cloud covering the star. But he still takes care not to pronounce the whole thing at once. It has a rhythmic beginning and various elaborations. But the core passage is repeated three times. Fungui, Magana, Kothana, Formagra, Enga, Ganaf, Itov, Ia, Ktoga. It's a weird chant, you know? And you, you, th you, you think your voice changes when you, you do the chant. It's w really weird. In time, Arbogast listens to your recital and nods. Remember every sound, but never speak it if you have plans left on this earth. Yet, you, you have discovered a secret, you know, we now go, now, we now know a secret. 
If your situation ever becomes desperate enough to try Arbogast Ritual, the text will offer you the option to chant. Thank you, Musgur. At that point, if you want to try it, add 10 to your current number and go to that new entry. You learned a self-destruction uh, 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 button, yes. So if, you, if the situation is desperate and everything is lost, we add 10 for the secret chant. Very good. This playthrough, we've unlocked two secrets, you know. Chant there was, was a girl from Nantucket. Yeah. Okay, so we add 10 to the current entry. That's the secret. Arbogast leans back. It will make you. It will make you one with the living. Go to one eighty-eight. One eighty-eight. A black shape lunges from the dark. It wraps an arm around Arbogast's throat, a throat, and drags him backwards out of the alcove. He grabs at the arm, kicking empty air. You see the gleam of a long blade in the moonlight. Make a dodge roll. If you succeed, go to 195. If you fail, go to 203. We're gonna make a dodge roll. What is our dodge? Our dodge is half the dex. Okay. And our dex is 50. So our dodge is... Oh, crap. Our dodge is 25. Okay, let's go to the dice cam. 25. Big money, people. Big money. 25. We're looking for 25 or less. Three. We rolled a three. An extreme success. We did it, people. We did it. Okay, so. We succeeded. We go to 195. 195. And we... Uh, we mark... Oh no, because it's, it's half deck, so we mark nothing. You know, the dodge thing. Uh, oh, we could. Yeah, we can. I'm gonna mark it as succeeded. Yes. We get good, good rolls, you know. The, the, the new dice, the new metal dice, fancy metal dice, are proving, are proving worth it. 195. A second figure swings at you with some kind of blunt weapon. You shove it aside, scramble out, trying to find a more defensible position. Because if they want to dance, we're going to dance, you know? Yeah, we pull the Neo move, like... And then we go out, and we put them up, you know? A gurgle draws your attention. Arbogast has a hand clapped to his neck. He's going like... <sighs> Blood drips between the fingers and spills from his mouth. His assailant stabs again, the wet blade slicing. Arbogast's wrist... Uh, uh, wrist... Um, uh, his, his, uh, his wet blade slicing Arbogast's wrist even as it sinks into his neck. You know, they're, they're going stabby stabby in, on, on Arbogast, you know? You see faces now. Low faces dubbed in some kind of tarry substance, eyes gleaming with hatred. Arbogast shoved his attacker off, staggering back, more blood cascading down his arm. The old half-man has willpower. He plants his feet, his feet, and raises a hand. You know, Arbogas is gonna make a stand for it. We're gonna make a, a sanity roll. If you succeed, go to two. Okay, we're gonna make a sanity roll, people. Our sanity is now fifty-nine, so should be easy. Fifty-nine or less. We're gonna make a sanity roll. Fifty-nine or less. Thirty-six. Thirty-six people. We succeeded. So we succeeded in our sanity roll. So we go to 210.
Arbogast howls a choke, wet sound, like <laughs> He stabs his palm forward, fingers curled in a strange ge gesture. Fire springs from the ground at his feet, a flickering blue wave, you know? He, he apparently cast, cast bonfire, you know? He, he cast bonfire, you know, D&D spell. It rushes in a stream as it is following a line of gasoline directly towards each attacker. Oh no, he's using a different spell. Well, the, the guy, the guy had, you know, like he had Moxie. He cast a spell and he's just burning the guys. Hungry, it climbs their clothing. They shriek as the flames touch their flesh. Arbogast drops to one knee. His face is pale and the illumination from the fires. In the illumination from the fires. His head uh, hangs forward. Yet even as, he, as his hand shudders, his eyes are alight with intractable will. The assailants scream as they flee in different directions. Eerie light playing of the buildings as they pass. They leave behind the terrible pungence of seared flesh. Tiny shoots of fire dance in the grass. Uh, uh, tiny shoots of fire dance in the grass for seconds longer, then vanish. Arbogast drops. Go to 236. He went down fighting, you know, and he fought well, you know. So respect. The blood flow from the wounds in Arbogast's necks has slowed to a trickle. His breath is shallow and fleeting. You can see his situation is hopeless. His eyes flutter, then close, as life departs. You mark a moment in respect. However, the attackers may come back. Who can you trust in this village? To fetch May here, go to 242. To return to the Ledbetter house and say nothing about the situation, go to 115.7. The stream is on fire, says Jason. Yes. What do we do? Do we bring May to this place or we just go home? Pile of ash. Yeah. What do we do? Bring May or go to her house and say nothing? Return. He said the whole town was in on it. Don't trust May. Yeah, we may not have to trust May. Layla says, bring her, say nothing. Bring, return, return, say nothing. We're having, we're having more return and say nothing, you know? Bring May. Nuff says to bring May to make a move on her. That might end up badly, you know? Okay, I'm gonna have to count. Return. Return, bring. Return, bring, return, 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 bring. Okay, no, it's bring, it is it, return. You know, we're going to return and say nothing. We go to 157. 157. The familiar surrounding of your guest room are becoming constrictive. The neat bed, small wardrobe and dressing mirror have the feel of a prison cell about them. What are you still doing here in Emberhead? Your new life is elsewhere. Also, you just witness some weird stuff. You lie on the bed and stare at a small crack in the ceiling. You turn over the day's events, thinking through the little details you spotted, like the magical fight just happened, you know? You're centrally weary from the elevation and the fresh air, but you still feel safe here. I wouldn't because of what just happened. Now we have a question. Uh, uh, now we have a choice. We can let ourselves just go to sleep, or do we stay awake? What do we do? Sleep, stay awake. What do we do, people? We don't know what happens. Remember, we don't met a game. But what happens? Do we sleep? Do we stay awake? Someone tried to kill us, and we watch men die. Stay awake. Sleep, 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 stay awake, 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 awake. Good choice, people. We stay awake. Two, 
2.30. This is good. We are not following the path of the happy squirrel on this stream, which we did, you know, we did follow on the last one. Sleep presses down on you. You blink it back. Sit up, trying to think through your situation. Everything in Emberhead seems to be working to stop you living. Perhaps the answer is to strike out at first light, to walk as far and as fast as you can. You can always return for your possessions, and if you lose them, you have nothing so precious that it could not be replaced. A tiny creak draws your attention to the other side of the room. Something, there's a sound, you know, a creak, something, something where like, crack. Slowly, almost silently, the doorknob is turning. To grab it and wrench the door open, go to 248. To pretend to be asleep, to go to 254. What do we do? Do we open the door? Or would you be, be pretend to be asleep? The doorknob is turning, you know? What do we do? Do we open it or do we pretend to be asleep? Open it, pretend, 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 pretend. I'm seeing a lot of pretends. Pretend. Pretend. Okay, we're gonna pretend to be asleep. <laughs> Sorry, Steven. We're going to pretend to be asleep. We go to 254. This this is good, you know. We got a lot of uh, out of this session. And the other session, I think we already died by now. 254. And the chant is 10. I'm gonna write this here 254 we pretend to be asleep you slide onto the bed and lie on your side eyes closed the hinges creak as the door opens there is a long pause a footfall sounds inside the room then another the steps are careful and feminine you give it a moment then open one eye crack this you can also twist the mouth like this May crouches with her back to you. She is fiddling with something in the fireplace. Do we confront May? Or do we wait and see? What do we do? This is the moment, people. What do we do? I don't think she, May is all bad, you know? Do we confront her? Or do we wait? What do we do? Confront. Wait. Wait and see. Wait and see. We got one confront. Two confronts, three confronts. No, the wait has it. For the record, I would have confronted her. We're gonna wait and see, 266. After another few moments, May glances around at you. Then you hear the soft scratch of a match being licked, like She applies it to something in the grate, tiptoes from the room. Once you hear her bedroom door, you creep to the grate. A small amount of black powder, no bigger than a thimble, is burning there. It gives off heavy, uh, uh, heavy fumes. You may make a hard science botany roll. If you succeed, go to 76. Otherwise, you might extinguish the powder and sleep, or you stay awake through the night, or you may relax and breathe the fumes. Okay, we're going to do first the hard science botany roll. Botany. Science botany. Um, I don't think I have... Oh, <laughs> my science skill is 0 0.1, so that's not going to be a good one. 
and I don't have a different things of science. So, okay. Yeah, we got a 30, so forget about it. So we failed the, the, the hard uh, botany roll. So now we have choices, you know? We have choices. We might extinguish the powder uh, and then go to sleep. We can try to stay awake through the night, not extinguishing the powder, you know? Or we can breathe the fumes. What do we do? You know what we need to do, people. You know what we need to do. Don't know. We're not metagaming, but this is funky. This lady lit something so we can extinguish it. We can try to stay awake or we can just breathe in the fumes, you know? Living life says stay awake, put it out, extinguish. Yes, extinguish. Put it out, yes. <laughs> breathe it <laughs> get rid of it yes we're going to extinguish it we go to 58 Layla says breathing you want us to die Layla you want us to die you know you are chaotic okay we extinguish the thing and we, then we go to sleep you wake into the sound of feet in the street outside Sound of feet might be zombies. Your night rest has brought new determination. Today, you will meet Emberhead on your own terms. You may restore one hit point if you have been wounded. No, we are at full health, so I guess we're good. Go to 64. Just so you know, in the last stream, if you have not watched it, and if you have not watched the last stream, I recommend you watch it because it was hilarious. We we did not try to stay awake. We just from the beginning we just slept through the night, and we got like intoxicated by that thing, and we got disadvantage on all of our roles during this final day. You know, so this was a good move. Now we don't have disadvantage, and this adventure might end differently. So good, you are exercising restraint and the mind of a private detective not like the last time where we were running around like a happy squirrel you know that was the mood last time happy squirrel yeah. 64 the lead better kitchen is empty although bread and eggs have been laid out for your breakfast there is a note from may explaining that she has taken ruth out for a few hours if you were involved in a fight in the village last night and want to investigate the aftermath, go to 70. Otherwise, go to 78. We were involved in a, in, a, in a fight in the village last night. Do we investigate or no? What do we do? We were so happy back then. Yeah, it's happy little squirrel. So what do we do? We investigate or not? That's the, the question. Investigate, 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 investigate. Okay, people, we're going to go and investigate. We go to 70. Good, you see, we're working the case. We're investigating. This is what a, a Call of Cthulhu investigator does. Follow the clues, investigate, you know, like learn the things, you know. If someone has a beard, we ask them, what is it the secret you are you're you're you know like hiding because you have a beard? Consensus on investigate, awesome. 70. You feel skittish as you approach the spot where you and Arbogast were attacked. Your memory of the encounter is shaky, but you remember one of two vivid images. At first you think there is nothing to see, no discarded weapons or figures lying unconscious. But upon closer examination, you find sticky congealed patches and blackened lines in the grass. If the village had a police station, you could go there. But something tells you events have gone beyond that. Go to 78. Indeed. 
We are in the final stretch, people. Stay frosty. You make a quiet circuit of the village, pausing in unobtrusive places to watch the villagers. It is rather busy for this time in the morning. Hey, uh, people are still... Uh, you might want to try and refresh the stream because I'm thinking you're kind of way behind or press where it says live, you know? Because I did the, the investigate question like two minutes ago. So it is rather busy for this time in the morning. Yawning locals uh, stream back and forward along the roads carrying bundles of split logs to the site of what you've heard referred to as the beacon. You see two figures already up in the superstructure arranging the wood. The festival bonfire will be most impressive. But do you intend to stay to see it? You suspect by now that something is amiss here. Also, all of the things Arbogas said might also be weird, you know? Stephen says, I had to leave the stream. Go to the channel and click on the live stream to get it live again. Yeah, yeah, you might... Yeah, you, you leave, you go back to the stream, you get live. Because, like I said, uh, some people were writing like things about two minutes ago. While the villagers are distracted, you may do some illicit investigation. Or you may simply leave town without looking back. What do we do? Do we go and search May Ledbetter's bedroom? Do we go to the village hall, try to search some clues, you know? You seem to read my comments five seconds after I send them, so I know mine is up to date. Good. We take a closer look at the artisan's courtyard. Remember, uh, don't, don't vote yet. Don't vote yet, people. Remember, in the artisan's courtyard, there was a, one of the stores was closed. And when we approach, the other guys kind of went like, whoa. You know, they, they, they like, uh, were uh, nervous. Hey, Ken, how are you? Do we spy on the activity on the beacon or, the, or do we try to get out down the east road? You know, don't make the game. So, search May's bedroom. Go to the village hall and try to search the village hall. Go to the artisan's courtyard. So, May, village, courtyard, beacon or get out. I think if we flee, we will get caught. We need more investigation, says Stephen. I agree. So, May's bedroom, the village hall, the artisan's courtyard, the beacon, or do we try to, uh, to leave? Artisan's courtyard, artisan's courtyard, hall, courtyard, hell hall, courtyard. I agree, people. Huh? There's more for the hole now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Bedroom. The next one breaks the tie. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, people. One more. Courtyard, hall, maze bedroom, the beacon, or do we leave? Someone else vote for the courtyard, please. The hall is bad news. It might be. I don't know. Oh, no, rerun. You already voted, so it, it, it doesn't count. Come on, people. Ah, huh? courtyard. Okay, people, we go to the courtyard. Good. I've never seen this one, you know? I, I, this is actually the third time I played through this. The first time I played on my own, second time was last stream, and now we went to the courtyard. You approach the back of the buildings in Emberhurst's northwest corner. Let me put up the map. We're going to the courtyard, you see? In the north, you know? By this time in the morning, you would expect activity in the artisan's courtyard, but the benches and anvils sit deserted. Your footsteps echo off the surrounding walls. One of the workshops is shut up and padlocked. You pick through the joints, 
but you can see nothing inside. To try to crack the padlock, go to 235. To physically break in the lock workshop, go to 234. To move on to another area, to go to 130. What do we do? Crack the padlock, break in, or move to other area? This is our, uh, our choices now. Crack the padlock, break in, move to another area. Mouse girl, she just goes hardcore, break in. The gaffer says break in. We know some lock picking, we should try to be stealthy for now. Okay, two cracks, three. Okay, we're four and four. No, we're three and three, I'm sorry. Break in, break in, break in. Crack, crack, crack. Break in, four. Four to three. Crack, four and four. Crack lock. Okay, we're gonna try to crack lock. We know some lock picking. We're gonna crack the padlock. You examine the padlock. It is old and not particularly secure. There are plenty of metal shavings around that could work as improvised picks. Here come back the happy squirrel friends. Yeah. But can you pick a lock? Make a locksmith roll. You may double your skill for this roll only. Okay, we're gonna... Uh, if you succeed, mark the small box. Okay, lock make, lock, lock, uh, locksmith. For locksmith, we have 21 and we can double our score here. So 42. I'm gonna write this down, 42. So... Let's go to the lock, people. Dice camera. We need to beat a 42. Let me just move this around. <sighs> 90. Extreme failure. Woo! Sorry. We failed. Go to 238. Sorry. 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, if we try to break in, we we would have, have to roll something about our strength or something. I don't know. But it's okay. This is, this is the good thing, you know? This is what gives flavor to the adventure. You step back from the lock and regard it in frustration. A crunching noise distracts you, and a human shadow falls on a nearby wall. Someone is approaching. You melt away in the other direction. Go to 120. 120. You feel... 120, I'm going to write this down. You feel a deepening unease about Emberhead, and this day in particular. Once you have attempted three of the options below, go to 98. Okay, we got three options. Look at this. Now we're sad squirrels. Otherwise, you may. We have three options. We can search May Ledbetter's bedroom. We can go to the village hall. We can take a closer look. No, we already did that. We can uh, spy the beacon or we can try to leave. We got two more choices, people. Two more choices. We can go to May's bedroom. We can go to the village hall. We can go to the beacon or we can try to leave. What do we do? Sad squirrels, yes. Sorry. Hall, maze bedroom, bedroom. We got two bedrooms, one hall. Beacon. Suicidal, if you ask me. Two halls and two maze bedrooms. Three maze bedrooms. The next one decides. Bedroom. Okay, we're going to May Led Better's bedroom. 83. Despite her hospitality, you do not trust May Led Better. You return to her house quite openly. Where else would you go? Inside, the dwelling is still empty. You rap on the bedroom door and wait. Silence. 
you use it open. The dead better bedroom is in marked contrast to your own, neat space. Dirty clothes are piled about the floor. On a rough quilt lies cool books and cheap novels. You notice a raggedy old doll discarded down the side of the bed. Make a spot hidden roll. Okay, spot hidden. 60. Let's go to the dice. We need to beat a 60. We need to beat a 60. 51. We did it. 51. We succeed, go to 95. 95. You notice scrapes on the floorboards corresponding to the legs of the bed. With effort, you slide the bed away. There is a rock spread beneath it, and beneath the rock, a trap door. You ease it open. The dark space beneath is some kind of cellar. We found a secret room, people. What do we do? Do we go down into the cellar, or do we give up this, this course of action? What do we do? We go down and investigate the cellar, or do we leave this course of action? Go down, cellar. Cellar. We're in a horror movie, we would definitely die going down there, but going to the cellar, cellar. We're going down, people. To descend into the cellar, 140. 114, sorry. We're doing this, people. We're investigating. We're doing the clues, you see? We're not acting like happy little squirrels. Cellar of hell. Okay. <clears throat> the daylight barely offers enough illumination to see, but a hot lantern during daytime would be very suspicious. You squeeze beneath the floor and glance around. Your first impression is that May keeps her junk here, for there are many boxes of different size piled in untidy heaps. It takes a few seconds before you realize they are all traveling trunks or suitcases. There are about 20 of them. The implication hits you hard. Yet you maintain enough control to check the luggage tags. You count eight or nine different names before you stop. Scrambling back up the bedroom, you close the trapdoor with trembling fingers, returning the bed to its place. Go to 120. So, she... It's a trap. We may attempt one more thing. One more thing. We can go to the village hall and maybe get some info over there. We can check out the activity at the beacon or we can try to leave the village. What do we do? Village hall, beacon or leave? That is the question. We're in the end game now, people. What do we do? Village hall, beacon or leave? Hall, beacon, beacon, hall, hall, leave, hall. Go back to the village hall. I'm telling you it's the place to be. Okay. We're going to the village hall. Go to 126. Good. Good. Keeping away from the streets, you skirt the northern cliffs and approach the village hall from the rear. You know? We're approaching the village hall from the rear, you know, in the northern part of town. It is close to the beacon and you will not be able to use the door unobserved. You check the windows. The one on the east side facing the beacon is bricked up. A shutter is loose on the westernmost window and you are able to ease it open a slide inside, closing the shutter behind you. You drop into the village meeting room and path through, passing through dim shafts of light and listening to the excited chatter of the locals from outside. The door opposite reads private. Hearing nothing from the other side, you turn the handle. Go to 133. This is exciting, people. The room is lined with books. In the corner, a small water closet and pantry. 
A quick survey of the rest of the room reveals little, so you turn to the bookcase. The dim light makes it difficult to read the spines. Is there anything useful here? We want to make a spot hidden roll, you know? If you have examined this bookshelf before, you may have a bonus die. See page 10 of the quick start rule for introduction if needed. We have indeed examined this room, so I'm going to rule that we have a bonus die, you know? So we roll with advantage. Let's go to the dice. Spot hidden for us is 60. No need. 14. We did it. We succeed at the spot hidden thing. Go to 147. We're doing good, people. We're getting good rolls from these new dice, you know? That's why you always get the metal dice, you know? 147. You're looking along the spines when you notice how close the bookcase is to the window on the north wall. From outside, there is a solid three or four feet between the edge of the window and the wall, and the bookcase covers the wall with the bricked up window. Further examination reveals an ingenious arrangement of slip case physically attacks, attached to the shelves. When you pull to the left, an entire section of the bookcase swings out. Another hidden passage thing, you know? The clatter of activity around the beacon seems to be building, and you flinch at every conversation that gets too close to the building's door. What do we do? Do we investigate behind the bookcase? Or we try to escape. What do we do, people? We just discovered a secret door behind the bookcase. What do we do? Do we investigate or we try to run? Bookcase. Bookcase. 100% bookcase. Investigate, investigate. Good, good. I'm so happy we're not happy little squirrels in this playthrough. We're going to investigate to 153. We're going to investigate. You squint into the darkness behind the bookcase. It is, small, it is a small alcove, big enough for one person, and has a hidden shelf on either side. You cannot make out any titles in this light. To risk opening one of the cliffside windows a little, go to 165. To grab a few books and leave, go to 159. What do we do? Do we open a little bit one of the windows to get some light or do we just grab some random books and go? I have no preference whatsoever on this one. So you decide. Open a window or grab books. Open 165, that's open. Open window. Do investigate. I think uh, I think Steven is a little bit behind on the thing. Open window. You might want to refresh your stream. Open window, book, book, book. Okay, open window has it. 165. Enough life spills in the room for you to make out titles. The contents of the alcove are quite different from the wider library. The books are much older, some are handwritten, and many are in strange scripts you do not recognize. You could spend a week in here just browsing, browsing through the bizarre volumes. Make a library use roll. If you succeed, go to 177. If you fail, go to this. You want to push the roll, attempt it again, go to... okay. Okay, I'm going to do a library, which I have 50. That is good. Let's go to the dice cam. Come on, 50. Come on, 50. 26. Success. Success. We did it. Success. If you succeed, go to 177. 177. We did it, people. We did it. 
We are rolling our way out of this friggin' town in this particular playthrough. Nice. Exactly. 177. Most of the texts are too obscure for you to understand without an extended residency in a good library. Like, for instance, the library of the University of Miskatonic in Arkham. You are drawn to one volume in a heavy slipcase embossed with a dark red triangle. Its pages are in a spidery script, but the hand... Oh, we got the thing! Hey! Uh, it was Stephen with the with the uh, stream elements tip for the better dice. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. So um, we're reading. Pages are, are written in a spider script, but the hand is neat enough that you can read it without effort, with with some effort. It seems to be one of a set of seven discussing elements. Here, sulfur, mercury, and salt are added to the four classical elements. This book concerns fire. Flicking through the pages, you see astronomical diagrams, alchemical symbols, reference to Dante, and speculations of the nature of damnation. Towards the end, there is a discussion of five ceremonies and a transcription of two key, key rituals. Call ye celestial flames and command ye celestial flames. We just discovered two rituals in this book. Call ye celestial flames and command ye celestial flames. You may be able to memorize one, but it will take time. In this all no is this all nonsense, or is it worth risking discovery for? You may check mark the small box beside the library use thing. Oh, okay. Uh, library use, good. So what do we do, people? Do we try to memorize call ye celestial flames? Do we try to memorize command ye celestial flames? Or if we feel that we push our luck, we, we, we just run, you know? So call the flames, command the flames, or we leave. Those are the choices. Call the flames, command the flames, or leave. What do we do? What do we do? Maybe we should ask Gladys. Well, she lives in a different, you know, universe. So. Command the celestial flames. Command, command. I agree. Command this. We're going to memorize. Command ye celestial flames. We go to 202. Command. You try to commit the wording of command ye celestial flames to memory. The text is full of strange characters and you can only make the best guess as to their pronunciation. The full chant will take 20 seconds or so. The commentary offers some advice. Turn ye not your eye from the fire, thus it does water from the heat. And commit your heart and mind in full to the path which you intend to walk, lest ye falter at the trial. Okay, so you have discovered a secret, another secret, people. So remember, we have our last option chant, and now we have, if the situation seems right for it, this text may offer you the option to chant. At that point, if you want to try this ritual, add 50 to your current entry number and go to that new entry. So 50, this is the command. We have two possible chants. One which is like, like a, a last ditch suicide. We will not survive. We, have, we know that one. And we know command the flames. 
we know those two chants and maybe at some point the adventure will tell us do you know a chant which one do you decide yes Stephen this is wonderful we will learn the secrets so we had 50 for command flames good this is good now go to 207 Tempting as it is to remove the book, it is too large to conceal. You slip it back into the shelf and ease the bookcase back into place. Immediately, you hear the scratch of a key in the hall door. You sprint for the open window. Make a dex roll. Dex. Our dex is 50. Let's go to the camera. Our dex is 50, people. We need to beat a 50. Eleven! Eleven! You see? We succeed! We go to 213. We are on fire! Or, well, not literally on fire, you know, which is what we try to avoid, but we're doing the things. 213s. With a burst of speed, you dart through the hall. As you hear the door open, you throw yourself through the open window, like cinematic, like crash, but not crashing because it's open, you know? There is no time to cover your intrusion, but you think you weren't actually spotted. Go to 120. We're going cinematic on this one, people, you know? Like diving through the open window as the door opens, you know? Like in, in slow motion, like <laughs> it's open. It's awesome. You feel a deepening unease about Ember and this day in particular. Once you have attempted three of the options below, go to 98. We have exhausted our options, so we go to 98. 98. Now, we are in the end game. You are contemplating your next move when you see one villager, a bald man with a damaged ear, watching you intently. Some instinct makes you walk in the other direction. It got it. Crash without the crash. Exactly. Like we face through the window, but it was open, so no crash. So there's the guy. This guy is watching me. Some instinct makes you walk in the other direction. Then you see the others ahead and to your sides. Worry, a, a wary teenager, an evil-eyed matron, and a man hefting a club. They are not staring uh, as obviously as the first, but they keep you under watch, and they are closing in. You cannot hope for to overcome four of them at once. What do we do? Do we try to lose them among the buildings? Or do we make a run for it? Those are our options. Lose them among the buildings? Make a run for it. What do we do? Buildings or make a run for it. Lose them, lose them. We got to lose them. Call the flames. No, that's not <laughs> blow ourselves up. No. Buildings. Okay, we got three buildings. Lose them. Okay. We're gonna try to lose them among the buildings. 158. 158. You dart through an alley, turn and head in a completely different direction. Running feet sound behind you. For the first time, you feel amber heads cramped, chaotic streaks work in your favor. You try to circle around towards the southern road. You see? We're trying to move between the buildings, circle around towards the southern road. We're gonna make a stealth check. Stealth roll. Okay, our stealth is 40. Let's go to the dice cam. Our stealth is 40. Big money. Ah, 93, not so big money. We failed. We were not stealthy. Just to be, you know, to be fair, I am not stealthy. Yeah, we might have tried to zigzag, but instead of zigging zag, we just like bumped into a wall and we, we drop a lot of crap and we were not stealthy, you know? So we failed. We go to 170. 
You turn a corner and walk straight into the formidable woman with the malevolent stare. She grabs your shoulder and bears down on you. As you struggle, the man with the club runs up with the teenager. You are quickly overcome. Go to 108. 108. Smooth, yes. 108. <clears throat> The fading light from a narrow window tells you afternoon is giving way to evening. Your hands are shackled behind your back so you cannot even lie down on the rough bed. A woman you have not seen before comes in. Her face is wrinkled and her eyes dull. They do not meet yours, but she puts a cup to your lips. Do we accept the drink or reject it? That is the question. We have been captured and this lady, she came here with a cup, she put it to her lips. Do we reject it or do we drink? Reject, accept. We got one reject and one accept. Take it, drink, reject, three and three and two. Four. Four and four. Reject. The next one decides. Drink. Whoa. We're going to overtime, people. We're tied. Accept. Okay. We drink it. Go to 104. For the record, I would have drunk it. I don't think they need to fear anything for us, you know, or they might think they don't have to fear anything for us. They do not know that we know the command ye the celestial flame the spell chant. You drink from the cup. It holds cool, refreshing water, which you gulp down. When it is empty, she turns to leave. You speak to her, but she steps outside, closes the door. Later, you try yelling. Your voice mo must be audible outside, but it has no effects. It seems the village, the entire village, is involved. Go to 205. 205. As the light fades outside, your little prism becomes dark. You can hear much activity around the building. Occasionally, an orange glow passes the window. The only comfortable position in the shackles seems to be to sit against the end of the bed with your arms hanging behind you. You need to concentrate and come up with a plan. There is clearly no escape from your bonds. You do not know exactly what your captors want from you, but you cannot ignore the fact that they have spent the entire day constructing a massive bonfire. And Ken says, oh no, got a cool refreshing water, bastards, damn you. Exactly. Go to 27. 27. The door scrapes, wrenching you back into the moment. Orange light spills into the house from blazing torches held at the threshold. Two large villages step in and grab you. Self-destruct to break the chains. Yeah, I don't know if, if we can do that, Nuff said. At least you assume they are villagers. They wear heavy black cloaks, their faces and hands are painted entirely black, save only for a red tri triangle centered on their left eye. You try to drag your legs, but they reach under your arms and lift your body from the bed. Outside, it seems that the whole village has congregated to see you. Every single one has a blackened face and a red triangle motive. Torches sputter and spill fire. You struggle but you can see physical resistance is hopeless. You are marched to the central street and turned to face the beacon. Go to 117. 117. The procession down the approach, the approach, if you remember, is that middle street, you know, the one that goes directly to the beacon, is low and formal. Say, uh, save when you sense weakness and yank at your captors. 
Jason's extinguished group? No, we get a couple of aces up our sleeves. We get two chants. One that basically nukes everything, and the other which commands ye celestial flames. We're not screwed. We're doing this, people. We're doing this. They don't know that we know what they don't know. A chill touches you when you see three human shapes carried ahead of you, draped, uh, draped in red cloth. The beacon looms larger and larger, its dreadful silhouette, a black triangle pointing to the stars. A low drone begins among the cloaked figures. On Biden, the, words mor uh, the, the word mourners comes to mind. Um, smoke from their torches makes you cough. You feel heat on your face. Yeah, we're not. We, we, I, I would, I, I would, uh, you know, prefer to survive, Ken. You know, I know one would think about nuking everything, but I would prefer to survive. As you reach the cleared area around the beacons, three dancers break from the pack. Young girls swinging balls of fire in spectacular arcs, drawing circles in the night air. Sorry, I'm drunk. So it's, okay, it's okay, bro. It's, it's okay. As soon as we finish this, I'm gonna go and like drink a beer. I forgot to have my beer for this stream. Yeah? So, some uh, the there's girls dancing, you know, with balls of fire dancing the circles in the night. One by one, they draw close to you and touch your forehead with soot fingers. Each kisses you three times: on the left cheek, the right cheek, then forehead. Then they whisper in your ear. The smell of kerosene fills your nostrils. Make an appearance roll. You know, if you succeed or you fail. Okay, appearance is forty. Let's go to the dice cam. Forty. We need to beat a forty. We're not very good looking, you know. We're forty. Ah, oh, 71. We fail spectacularly. Okay, if you fail, go to 148. 148. We're kind of ugly right now, you know? We're probably like this. Or something like that. 148. Through your sacrifice, the village will be reborn, says the first dancer. You pass from earth to the air for our sakes, says the second. Through incandescence may you find rapture, says the third. Their dance weaves off and disappears behind the building. Go to 18. Because of the ugly mod, yes, sorry, sorry. But at least I have the pipe. And I can point at things. 18. As you arrive beneath the beacon, ten villagers close in on you. Working with surprising coordination, they immobilize you and lift you up the blackened iron stairs to the raised platform. You cannot help but shiver at the sight of the central framework, twisted from past blazes, and what you can now clearly see to be fastening points for chains. None of the eyes meets yours as they lash you onto the metal. The village sings now, something rhythmic and ancient carve from old syllables. A second group ascends to the beacon, carrying the three red draped uh, bodies. With reverence, they arrange the burdens in the triangle around your feet. Then they withdraw, leaving you alone with the dead shin deep in a sea of kindling. Go to 33. It seems the entire village is gathered around the beacon to watch you burn. Behind the face paint, you recognize May Ledbetter. And yes, that is Silas, the coach driver, standing at her side. The audacity and scale of the decep deception staggers you. A man, st a man steps up on the dais and raises his hands with quiet authority. The frame of his spectacles obscures the red triangle on his face. I think this is the jacket's winters, you know? So we draw here together again on this night, as we do each year, and we give thanks to the ones who will preserve the village against the fire of the void. You will be taken by the ones from above in our stead. Your death will bring life to our streets and bounty to our fields. 
Silas betrayed us? That bastard, said Stephen. Yeah, the bastard. It will safeguard our children and our elders alike for another year. We salute you. He bows his head. All around the beacon, bearers step forward and lift their torches to the edge of the race platform. A ring of tiny flames flicker up around the perimeter. As they wink, the singing of the villagers drop into an unearthly rhythm. To throw all your remaining strength against the bond, go to 44. To wait and see what happens, go to 40. What do we do? Do we use our strength or do we wait? That's our question. Use the strength or wait to see what happens. Remember that we have dice up, I mean, uh, an ace up our sleeve. We have two chances. We have the nuke and we have the command ye flames from above. Use strength, says Mouse Girl. Wait, says Steve. Wait, says Layla. Wait, three waits. Four wait, wait. Okay, we're gonna wait. I agree, we should wait. So, we're gonna wait and see what happens. 40. No, I don't think we need the hands for the chance, but you know. I think if we eventually, it's okay. We wait. And this is it, people. I'm seeing it. You can see it already on, on your screen as well. 40. The flames snake across the kindling, catching and rising. Smoke rises and it becomes difficult to see the villagers. The tree bodies surround you catch fire, blazing with sooty red flames. You begin to cough as the smoke enters your lungs and fight down the urge to panic. If you have learned a strange chant and wish to try it, this is the moment. Okay, so remember, we know two chants. One is basically a uh, nuke everything, we die, but we take the bastards with us. And the other, which is the, that's the chant, that the uh, Abernathy, the, the, the guy with, uh, you know, uh, with the half face, he taught us. But that is a suicide chant. We die after that, but we take the best with us. And we know the other chant, which, the one we learned at the village hall. Command ye flames above. What do we do? Command flames, control the flames. Yes, yes. We can control the flames, people. Command ye flames from above. Command. Command. Okay, we're going to command. To command the flames, we need to add 50 to the current thing. So we go to 90. We go to 90. Ninety. Here we go, people. You clear your throat <clears throat> and begin the ritual you found in the strange book, pronouncing the strange syllables as best you can. You know the fire is leaping ever closer by the touch of heat on your faith, yet you put your panic aside and concentrate on completing the chant. As you speak the weird words, you become aware that the song of the villagers has shifted and they too are chanting, an eerie tingling builds in your palms and temples. You are casting a spell. We're casting a spell, people. You may commit up to 10 magic points to this spell. If you have less than 10 magic points, you may spend hit points on top of the magic points, but not so many that you are reduced to zero hit points. Decide how many points to commit then go to 198. We have 12 magic hit points, people. And I vote we commit up to 10. Let's commit the 10 magic points. What do you say? Do we commit the 10? That's the magic. We have 12. But it's all in now. Let's commit the 10 points. Or you want to commit less? 10. 
10. 10. Okay, people, we're committing 10 magic points. We cannot commit 12, or I would have committed 12. But we're not committing 10. Okay, so magic points will reduce to 2. And we go to 198. We committed 10 magic points. And we go to 198. 10 points. 198. You sense, rather than see, stars descending from the skies above you. Because we're commanding ye flames above. From your flaming tether, you reach out to command the stars. Every magic point you committed gives you a 10% chance to succeed. So if you committed 6 magic points, you must make a 60% roll. Any roll of 96, 0 is always a fail. Okay, if you succeed with Command G Celestial Flames, well, we committed 10 magic points, so we have a 100% chance to succeed, you know? But any roll of 96 to 00, zero is always a fail. So we need to roll 96 or less. Let's go to the dice. Sixty-two. We succeeded. We succeeded. Though committing the ten magic points, it was a good thing, you know. If you succeed with command G Celestials, go to two o nine. We did it, people. Two o nine. The stars are alive. From above, they see you the center of a conflagration. They see Emberhead spread out from the beacon, its small plateau facing a dark sky, and they hear the villagers begin the same chant you have just completed. You see? The villagers are, going to, are starting to chant the same chant we completed. So, we need to move fast. We lose 1d3 sanity. Um, 1d3? That, that that's, doesn't make any sense. There is not a three-sided dice. Let me, let me see over here if it says something different. 209. Yep. It says lose 1d3. Uh, oh, sorry, we do have a 1d3, sorry, this one. Oh, we, lo we lost four points of sanity. No, this is a d4, what the hell? 2d6 divided by 2, oh, you're right, you're right. In Call of Cthulhu, that's a thing. Uh, a d3 you can uh, you can simulate it we need to roll a d uh, d a d6 and divide by two okay good point we lose three sanity points good point silverbird okay so sanity points uh we lose three so we go at 56 we're good we're good we're good if this drops you to, and, and Silverbird says, Ahem. yes, good. Uh, if this drops you to zero sanity, go to, no, we're not. Okay. Now, now, no, it's okay. We got like 54 and we're good. Now listen to this carefully. These are our options. And remember, the villagers are starting to sing the same song. They're starting to sing the command, ye flames from above song. So we need to move fast and decisively, wink, wink. To command the stars to depart, command the stars to free us, or command the stars to incinerate the villagers. What do we do? 
Hey, JC, where is that character sheet? Roll 20? No, it's a PDF. You know, it's a PDF that I've just, I have open on my desk and just, and uh, I'm using it. They have on them on Chaosum. They, they are, you can, uh, you know, like fill them and they calculate. They're pe pretty good. And the, the, the adventure module is also a PDF that is free for download. So what do we do, people? Do we tell the stars to depart? To free us or to incinerate? We got one incinerate. We got one, two, three, four free. Two incinerate. Three incinerate and three free. Four free incinerate. Four and four. We are burn them all free. Five and five. I'm going to make an executive decision, people. Huh? And that incinerate, com uh, you know, like... Uh, you know, backs by decision. We are going to command them to incinerate the villagers. We are going hardcore on this one. So, we're going to incinerate these jackasses. And people are going incinerate free, incinerate free. Tiebreaker, incinerate. Because those jackasses were going to burn me and they started singing the same spell. So screw them. 231. The smoke shifts for a moment and you see the villagers staring up at your immolation, cloaked and dubbed with their ridiculous face pain. These people lured, tricked, and murder you. You send the stars to bring your wrath. Suddenly, there are among them a thousand points of light, illuminate them, them with celestial radiance, sparkling with the brilliance of distant suns. Their faces open in wonder, in delight, raising a hand to touch the lights. But everything the tiny lights touch burns. Horror sweeps through the crowd. They run screaming as their flesh is singed and stripped from their bones, carving traces of ash into the ground with their dying steps. Every last one of them burns. The pitiless stars move among them and leave none alive. You shriek in pain as the fire consumes you, but you take one small satisfaction to the grave. Emberhead will never crave another victim. You have burned to death in the beacon, but you took the entire village with you. The end. Yeah, we did. But we took the bastards with us. Now, since we are not going to play in this campaign again, we're going to play more uh, solo adventures for Call of Cthulhu. There's, there's like five or six more adventures. We're going to do a little thing. That we should not do, but I want to, I'm curious. We're going to see what happens in the other options. So let's go back to 209. And we're going to do the other thing that Chad was saying, which is free. 243. See, yes, we can see what release us would have done. Yes, Silverbird, what did you do? The stars respond to your command, dropping and converging on the beacon. You feel a moment of transcendent glory as your body is annihilated in white heat and light. <laughs> you have burned to death in an otherworldly inferno. Would you like to try again? <laughs> so yeah, you see, you commanded the lights to free you. And they go and they free you from your mortal coil. So, freeing was not the right choice you know you die even if you win yeah and you know now now i'm really curious i wanna i wanna check the other one 209 what happens if you command them to depart i'm, I'm pretty sure you I, I, we're gonna see we're not going to stay with the you know like with the with the doubt command to depart go to 255 255. Your word arrests the stars in their descent and holds them, scintillating above the village. Then, one by one, they lift and rise. You hear a gasp from the villagers, 
A communal intake of breath, and for a moment, a deep sadness descends upon you. Then, the unrelented flames cover your body. <laughs> you have burned to death in the beacon. However, you did briefly reach beyond this earth. Would you like to try again? The end. So you see, all of these three ended up with us dying. But the one we originally selected, we burned the bastards to ashes. To be honest, I don't know if this module has a, a different ending. I don't know if the investigator can survive. But this, this often happens in the tales of Lovecraft, you know, in the Call of Cthulhu thing. Um, there's no, no, no happy ending, you know? Sometimes all you can do is settle to take the bastards with you, just to serve. Exactly. Exactly, Jason, you know? Hey, CDP Media, how are you? You made it to the closing argument. So, shut up, Siri, I'm not talking to you. I want to show you, before we end this, you know, this was awesome. I don't know if you like this, but this was awesome for me, you know. We got it with the dice cam, you know, and the map of the village. It was awesome. Yeah, I don't know. But like I said, this module in particular, alone against the, 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 the flames, this PDF that you are seeing right now, is free, you know. Hey, Stephen, with the super chat. Uh, I mean the the, the donation uh, with the with the streamlabs. Rest in peace, noble Nichols. Rest in peace. Thank you, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, this PDF is free. You can go to the Chaosium the site, uh, solo adventures, and this is free. So you can play this adventure at home for free. The the sheets, you know, the PDF, the character ships also available do the calculation it's awesome there's one thing i want to show you before we end the stream because i was looking at the at the like the images that you can see not in the pdf but here in the printed that comes with the set and there is one image that i guess at some point we might encounter this guy you know there, there he is. Look at, look at who you might encounter eventually. Wilson. So even in Amberhead, in a Call of Cthulhu thing, that psychotic bear follows us. <laughs> So there might be a storyline somewhere which ends with Wilson, you know, chomping on our ass, you know. And on that thought, I will leave you. I, you know, there was a seven days to die video published this uh, at noon. So if you haven't watched that, you can go and watch it. This stream is going to be up on YouTube as soon as it's done processing. And remember, tomorrow, Saturday morning, Bolheim stream we go to the viking apocalypse or viking afterlife you know so yeah i hope you enjoyed this stream it was a lot of fun we will do this again with other adventures you know and maybe in a few months when we are we forgot this we might take another crack at this one but there there's another solo adventures for call of cthulhu we're going to play them so yeah i hope you enjoyed this stream that's it for now See you next time.